Besides this, yeah. this is obviously gonna be. You want to know what really happened? You need to watch this. This is the yeah. only place you're gonna get this type of interview. Sorry. Uh, uh, what this is, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, Judge. Not not guilty. I'm innocent. We the jury being duly impaneled sworn find the defendant Matthew L. Moore not guilty of murder as he stands charged in count one of the indictment. Yo, 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 how we doing, people? Let me sort myself out here. So, how we doing, beautiful people? Dennis, morning, my friend. Morning to you, Den. Hope you're well, Dennis. Hope, hope everyone's well. Ready for tomorrow, I bet, Den. Ready for tomorrow for the can read. Um, bloody hell, I can't even think. Pre-trial. Documents, limony, uh, whatever you call it. I can't think, it's too early. Uh, to the pip, hi, Tuds. I just sent you a message back on Discord, Tuds. Um, but hey, Tuds, I hope you're well. Whoop, on time today, John Jobathan. How are we doing, sir? Hope you're well. Good morning, Cassie. Happy, happy, happy to see you, Cassie. Hope you're well as well. Uh, lovely to see you. And thank you, Cassie. You're still coming back to the streams, which I uh, do really appreciate. Um, Shout out as well to these wonderful women in my life. Shout out to to uh, Mexi who bought a membership, and also shout out to Tudley as well for buying a membership. Thank you to you both for your continued support. If you want to buy a membership, you can do so there. Um, there's three levels. People ask me about three levels. Party Club is the only level you need. It's these two. They gave me three options. I put three in, but please. It's only one you need. It's only the padding club you need. It's fine. Um, and also, you can buy coffee as normal. So anyway, that's my thank you to Mexi Taxi and to Tootly Pip. Thank you, ladies. Um, oh, fuck, you couldn't even see it. Hang on. There you go. Hang on. It's there. Again, thank you, Tuds. Thank you, Mexi. And I say the membership is up there. First of May, we go in there. Paddington, Erin Tackle Club, Happy Days Club. But only one you need is Paddington Club. Um, right. I hate talking about stuff like that. So end screen. Here she is. That the hackster is in the house. How are we doing, hack? Share screen. Everybody, hackster. Everybody, hackster. Everybody, Haxter's in the house. Haxter is in the house. Sorry, I have yet to change over my membership. Oh, don't worry. Hey, it's it's plenty of time. Plenty of time. Do you know what I mean? Also, no one needs to buy memberships either, guys. I know money's tight, so no one needs to buy a membership. It's just if you want to support, and if you can afford to support... I, I had a scare. They had so many tabs open. All right, please be All right, let's see what they're going to say. All right, we are back on the record in state of Wisconsin versus Nikolai Mew. Uh, the attorneys are both, both sides of the attorneys are present. Mr. Mew is present. 12 jurors are present. Um, when we left off yesterday, uh, we were told that the jury wanted to uh, view a portion of the uh, Juwan Cockfield video again. Um, Mr. Anderson, do you have it queued up? Yes. Right. And Mr. Trophacy, you, or Mr. Nelson, you all consulted about the right spot to start from? Perfect. Um, let's get up the monitor and then you can hit play.
Monitors working for everyone? Okay. Please begin. Well, so you get the video to work. Okay. Please stop. We don't have audio. Anybody need to see it again? Okay. I'm seeing no indications. Um, please take the jury out. Please continue your deliberations. All rise for the jury. <clears throat> Please be seated. Is there anything else for the record while we're assembled? No. All right, that's all. We are in recess. Okay. Um, hi, Anisi. Hi, Murph. Um, I think that's the, the, obviously the point is that they don't want you to see a slow motion because it's it's that kind of reaction time of. Um, this is what happened in real time. Do, do you know what I mean? So that's why if you d dissect the, every single slice, it starts to become distorted a little bit, um, which is why they won't allow that to happen, you know. So uh, I understand it, but I, I get what you mean. We we got the knowledge of we can see every single – we could play a 0.25 if we want. We can see every – um, but, yeah, as a juror, I mean, you can't react – because that's fast. If you slow it down, it looks slow, or you could maybe do different. He could have maybe got his arm away. He could, you know, so um, I understand why they do it. But yeah, I don't disagree with you. Um, but it's, it's, um, that's the only reason because people will over dissect it then, essentially. Um, I never want to see the video again. His voice is annoying, man. It's annoying. For the culture. 
I feel bad. Um, I have to watch that over and over again. I know. Good morning. Hey, Seahawks. How you doing, my darling? The news channels had coverage last night. All more in favour of the defence. Seems all leaning towards Saturday fans. I'm sticking with not guilty all counts. Friday around noon. So, you say that. Funny you say that. So, I got a long prime up. Let's see there. Oh, they just had a bloody thing up. Most people think this going to come back this afternoon. Um, uh, Lone Crime just had a poll up, and it was 50-50, basically. 50-50 in Lone Crime, which is huge for Lone Crime chats. So the plan is today, because obviously we've got some beautiful people here, the plan is, let's, well, first of all, let's have a look at what Lone Crime chats are saying. And then I got videos lined up. I have got videos lined up um, for us to watch. For you ladies, I got Trey Ghost. Hey, hey. Baseball dad, how you doing, fella? How's it going, mate? Hope you're well. Um, for us guys, we just crossed through. Well, I mean, he's a good looking guy. So, you know, nothing wrong with that. So I have got Peter Trey Ghost, a couple of videos, and another video of um, another D, um, another attorney as well. So. Right, let's have a look. Let's go. I'm confused now where I need to go. There we are. Let's have a look at the chat here then. What are they saying in the chat? Can you see the chat? Is it uh, what if I bear with me? What if I do this? Is that better? If I move myself to so up there. So we can see what they're saying. Not guilty in the name of hemorrhoids. No. Not guilty, not guilty. Second degree, first degree. Pole is very close. What fucking pole? There is no pole, you muppet. There was a pole, yes, but it's gone. Now, what do you expect from LNC chat? Sean, potential criminal, said in, in my honour, he will pray to the tubes. Erinac, tubes, Minnesota, Minneapolis. Erin Hack and two ups. Not guilty. Is Sean not guilty? Is he did, what was what was Sean's take, Erin? Is it pure not guilty, or did he feel like he was maybe second degree or anything like that? Um I couldn't see it, Kathy Smith, but some are saying he had it out before he was attacked. Well, it depends when you say he was attacked, Kathy Griffin. He didn't just call him names. Exactly, Sherry Smith. Very strong evidence for guilty. Line does not make you a murderer. The human version of the show with River Monsters. Jesus, gone quick. Not guilty. Guilty. It's called Stand Your Ground. We are the culture. For the culture. It's really, it really is a crumbly crowd. Guilty, guilty. It's quite, you know, 50-50, do you know what I mean? So, anyway, I'm sure we could spend all day looking at that, but there's no point, is there? Um, I will be keeping this in the background. Oh, what am I doing there for? Seventy-eight, not guilty. So, the one, that, um, the one I saw this morning on there, I voted in there. I had a, just an, I think eight hundred ninety people voted, and it was fifty fifty, guilty not guilty. Um, it's like forty eight percent not guilty, forty nine guilt, uh, forty seven guilty with some saying hung jury. Do you know what I mean? Um, he really really wants a not guilty, but doesn't know 
how the jury revolt because of the lying he did. Nervous about the lying. Yes, yes, I got you. Right through tree shits on everything long. <laughs> Jobathan. Kind of surprising for LC chat. This is what I mean. It's it's not a slam dunk, you know. Uh, I mean, oh, there's a lot of people who are adamant is guilty and, and people that are adamant is not guilty. It's, it's not that easy. He thought Corey's closing was fire. It was it was good. It was good. I, I'll be honest with you, though, right? Being critical of the defence, um, I will be critical of the defence. Hi, Kimmy. How are you doing, my darling? Um, you don't see them being pretty uniformly based often. Mm. So my only criticism of defence is I don't think they did a... Um, um, I think they could have done more for him. But whether it was money or whether it was not... I don't know. I think that there's not quite enough. They didn't quite do enough um, to explain the shock and stuff like that. Not many we commented that yesterday. Um, and I agree. I, I think there, there's probably one, maybe two experts missing from there. I, I, mean, I was a bit shocked when they closed. I, I, I didn't expect that. I did not expect that. But they must have been confident in their... Or it could be the case that they didn't have any money left to spend on experts. I I don't know. Judge has been... Hang on, Kim. Hang on. Um, we just had not lied. Yes, I, th I think it plays a big part in people's senses. I hope he's not guilty. I'm so sick of this generation of punk entitled kids. I think they can do what they want with no consequences. That's certainly one way of looking at it. Did the judge come in? Yes, he did. He's been in. They've um, they've watched the video again. The jury asked to watch it, Kim, and they re-watched it once, and now they've gone back to deliberate again. So they've been and gone, Kim. Been and gone. Saying he wasn't... F Your knife looks really bad, even if you were in the right... To use it. Oh, he's not done himself any favours here. Nikolai hasn't. Hunter was just as bad in stand your ground state with a pew-pew. Yeah. He's done none, he's not he's not not coming out of this looking very good. He's done a lot of stuff wrong. Um right, let's I'm gonna have this in the background, but let's go and look at everyone lead all the ladies love this guy. So let's watch him to keep the ladies happy. Oh, hang on. Some people just in case you haven't seen it, so I'll play this first, right? I'll play um the um, Madison Cohen's testimony that you know we we got a synopsis of it. Um, you know we'll 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 do that um, because not everyone's seen it. So we'll 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 look at that now uh, first, and then I go to Tregos. Um, hang on, which one is it? So this is Mandy Cohen, the one we didn't see. On the stand, she is. If you can find it, here we go. This is Core TV. Good morning, St Spacey Stacy. I love that name. I just love it. Hi, Stace. They have watched the videos three times now in like four hours. That tells me they are focused more on the event rather than what. Yeah, yes, I agree. Right. So again, this is Madison Cohen, the woman that we did not see on the stand. We don't get to see a testimony, but we get a synopsis of it, as in, um, you know, a version of what she said on the stand. So here we go. A witness in the Apple River stabbings case who didn't want her testimony seen or heard could be the person who tips the scales. Madison Cohen's altercation with defendant Nikolai Mew is what sparked 
the incident that turned deadly. Now, Cohen says that she confronted the defendant after she saw a group of teenagers yelling at him. Body cam video of the aftermath is the only glimpse we see of her. Take a look. <laughs> he punched me in the face. I don't know what the f that's on the camera. Please, we're going to help. We got a gentleman down there. He's just got her out in the f***ing open. Okay. <laughs> A transcript of Cohen's testimony lays out what she says about who threw the first blow. So on direct, she said, he strikes me in my left side of my face with his left hand. And the question is, did he hit you with a closed fist or an open hand? She said, I can't remember. I thought it was with a closed fist. And the question is, you didn't, you don't remember like seeing it coming in though? And she said, everything happens so fast. Then later on cross exam, the question is, okay, so he throws it with his left. He throws a hook with his left hand. Is that right? She said, uh huh, yes. And he said, and I think you testified that he hit your left side of your face. She said, yes. The question is, okay, so he hit you on this side. Describe how that's humanly possible. Her answer, I actually do get my lefts and my rights mixed up a little bit. Okay, is that going to be a problem? Let's bring in our guest and talk some more about this. Criminal defense attorney and former elected district attorney Matthew Mangino. Oh, Matthew, what do you think when you hear that? Well, that uh, that doesn't sound good. It's not a, it's not a good look. You obviously can't get hit on the left side of your face with a left hook. Now, you know, she tries to explain it away by getting getting my rights and my lefts uh, mixed up, but I, I would have made her demonstrate how this happened. So if she throws with her left, obviously she's going to realize that you can't get hit on the left side of your face, uh, so she may have explained it a little better. Uh, I don't know if there was a demonstration of that blow or not, but that certainly would have helped clear it up for the jury. If she was just testifying and she says, I got hit on the left side of my face with a left hook, the jurors are going to pause. They're going to say, wait a second, that's not possible. Right, Matthew. I love what you said there. And there was not a demonstration. We went all through the transcript and you're right. That could have really helped clear it up. And then maybe she would have made better sense. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying she's lying. I'm just saying, you know, that that's not good that she's saying you know she's an adult woman and saying i get my left and my right confused uh, let's look at a little more here um so this is from a point in the transcript transcript where she's being questioned uh, by the prosecutor and uh, she's talking about how she did make contact and put her hands on nikolai mu she's asked what did you do and she said i graciously grabbed the corner of his elbow and i got it him back toward me instead of those boys did you yank him? No, sir. Did you and Riley, Riley's another one of the girls involved in this, did you both touch his shoulders? Yes. Shove him? You didn't shove him or hit him, which is actually an objectionable question there, as you know, yeah. Matthew. And uh, she says no, because the defense is saying that she did shove him and was pushing him and that the strike that he delivered to her was a defensive strike. Oh, my, this is messy, isn't it, Matthew? How, how does this get sorted out for the jury and i think for all of us at home struggling with not seeing her and she's not on the video how much do you think that might matter matthew for the jury that this incident wasn't caught on tape well uh, there's no question that the jurors uh you know like to see videotape that, that genuinely shows exactly what happened there's a lot of videotape here but yet there's no videotape of this encounter uh, you know, we didn't get to see her, we didn't get to hear her, but the jury did. So the jury has uh, that ability to uh, determine her believability or credibility. And that's what every case comes down to. You know, do you believe what this witness is telling you? Is this witness credible? And they can make those judgments. We can't, we haven't had an opportunity to see it. Uh, but again, we have to remember that self-defense you know, is it reasonable? Is your conduct reasonable? Did, did you need to lead, to use lethal force? Did you believe you were in danger of serious bodily injury or death? And that's really what the standard is here if we're going to talk about 
uh, self-defense in this case. Mm, right, Matthew. Thank you for that. Serious bodily injury or death got to be imminent, as you said. Uh, what was his belief at the time? I, I, I do have a clip I would love to play for you. Now, this is from witness Riley Madison. So she's friends with Madison Cohen. She calls her Maddie. So Madison Cohen, the woman who chose not to be on camera, but Riley was okay with being on camera. And she really does corroborate the story that Madison tells. Let's take a look. Do you remember everything sequentially perfectly or is it choppy? I, it's very choppy for me. Okay. So what do you remember next? Um, I remember getting off the tube, walking up to Mr. Mayu, um, and I just remember Maddie being in there and yelling at him. Um, I remember her being punched in the face, and then I remember being stabbed, and that is completely it. Okay, uh, Matthew, how much does testimony like this help? Well, certainly it, it uh, corroborates what we've heard from Madison Cohen, uh, that in fact, uh, this whole incident was precipitated, certainly uh, the physicality of it was precipitated by by him punching her in the face. And, and that is consistent with her testimony uh, and it's helpful for the prosecution. Right, Matthew, it certainly reinforces their position. Uh, we'll leave it there for now and go in there live this morning when they start back up. I want to say a big thank you to Matthew Mangino for his time and expertise this morning. We'll see you soon. And that's all for this episode of Opening Statements, my friends. You can watch it or share it. She's all right looking. She, she's good looking as well. Um, right. So. Stayed on the run. Stayed on the run. Let's go see Trigo. Shit. Let's go see Trigo, shall we? You are. Oops. I need to go and. Hang on. I need to find where I'm going. Oh, before I do that, right, I got a clip here for you, right? I got another clip here. We get to find out the jewelry, who's the alternate and who's not. So. Uh, yesterday, uh, you can see the judge sent home two male alternates. Uh, so we are now at a 6-6 six, six, uh, gen. Fuck, I'm on fucking mute. Motherfucker. Right, so now we know the final jewelry stance here. The two alternates were um, these two. Male jewelry 40, male jewelry 60. Okay. So that is a bit of a hit for them, for the defence, I suppose. But then we still got a 90-year-old, so that's probably a bonus for them. So we've got two 20-year-olds, one 30-year-old, Two forty year olds, so two four five there. Then we get to be the older generations, the Erin Hacks and stuff like that. Then three fifty. <laughs> so I'm joking, Erin. I'm joking. Three fifty year olds, three seventy year olds, and a ninety year old. Jeez, how's that going to be impacted? How do old people view this? I mean, that's going to have a huge impact on it. So I, I can imagine the possibly the, the ones in the twenties and thirties, maybe a bit like, well, you know. They, they might probably lean a little bit more like guilty, um, but the older generation might lean another way. I don't know. But that's the final makeup, which is interesting. That's interesting. So, hmm. Don't forget the one Dave they have. The one Dave. <laughs> 370s and 350s is good, and I'm not 50 yet. 
<laughs> you old English man. That tease is real. Um, it's going to be hilarious if the 90 year old is mega disagreeable and holds liberations. <laughs> but you never know. Look, we don't know. I couldn't laugh. Um, sounds like a Chad name. Uh, Lord Cry before, yeah, so that's the same as this morning then. Well, not this morning. Well, before I started the stream, it was 48 to 49% not guilty in Lone Crime, which if you watch 90 uh, Lone Crime, that's unusual. They're all the way, like most streams I've seen, most polls I've seen, most people have lent and says self-defense, um, not guilty. But... Um, Aaron Harker sure does. I know a few Darren's that were stand up people. 90 year olds, holy shit. Mighty beat. Mighty beat. How are we doing, fella? Corey was a child yesterday and is closing 1000%. 39% guilty. Okay, he was 47 earlier on, so um, that's changed a little bit then. What up, Mighty Me? Aaron Hark. Aaron Hark, 50s, hit or miss a lot more than the older groups, I feel like. It's still pretty based. In comparison to the youngsters, the young uns, we just don't know, do we? We we just don't know. I better move myself. We just don't know. But that's the final makeup, anyway, which is, I find interesting. Do we? I think you, you can find that interesting. It's good to know. I mean, we don't know what gender people are in. We don't know, but two, three, four, five. You you imagine the yeah? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. No, though. Hang on. Two, I'll be back. Two seconds. I mean, the younger generation is starting to go based. St. Crow County overall is based, in my opinion. No, it goes both ways with all age groups. Yeah, 100% it does, yeah. Hey, all. Oh, hey, Mighty. <laughs> Your pot plants. My next door neighbor is 97. I can't imagine her being a Jura. She would definitely say, F those kids, though. <laughs> yes, I know. At least it's the main hub city. Yeah, it is in the main hip city. Okay. Um, so Right, Stacey, I feel like no nine year old is going to support the kids culture. The old generation will probably see the punk kids. Yeah, we'd be interested to see. Be interested to see. Um but anyway, that that's that then. That's the makeup of the jury. We now know. Obviously we don't know what age the females, males and stuff are, but um, yeah, they watched the video three, t I thought it was twice, but apparently it's three times they watched the video back. They don't have the video in the, the deliberation room. If they want to request to watch it, um, they have to come out on call. Uh, Especially says, heck, yeah, they will. All of my clients are like 70 plus, and I absolutely love talking to the older ones. I agree with Mighty here that lesser included is make this a tough one. 100% not guilty on first degree murder, but second degree manslaughter is close. Yes. I, I That could be the resolution. This is why I, I'm, I'm angry that they let her in. They charged him on one, and then all of a sudden, at the end, came in with all the other charges. You know, I, I don't like that. But it, they might just go for like something like second degree. Uh, reckless homicide. You know, first group to say something you're not allowed to say anymore. Yeah, they are. Ninety-something-year-old people have no patience or time for the for the crap today. Yes, that's true as well. Um, right, let's let's go and see Tragos, shall we? Let's go and see. Let's keep you girls happy. Um, let's keep you girls. Also, some of us men. I love Tragos, so. I think he's fantastic. I think Trigg is probably the one person I love listening to the most. Um, Attorney-wise, that is. 
Everybody. So I got two videos for Tregos. The first one's three hours. Um, and it's about the Mew testifying. So basically, strap in. You got three hours of him. Then I'll play another video, which is of another attorney. And then we got Tregos again. Um, so I will put this on for you women to drool all over. So no one can call me sexist. I'm always got these good looking people for you. Um, What's up, everybody? Tonight's video, we're going to be breaking down and reacting to Nikolai Mew, the defendant's testimony here, direct examination where he gets to explain his story from his point of view, what he saw, what he did, what he thought, what he felt, which is incredibly important in self-defense cases when people are being charged with homicides. But then we're going to watch the cross and we're going to break down that cross examination when he has to deal with a very different version of events that he told coming from his mouth, using his own words against him and how the prosecutors put that together and whether or not we think it hit or didn't hit. And there was also an incredible amount of objections by the defense lawyers. Were they trying to hide something? Were they trying to block certain questions? Did it work for them? All of that on tonight's videos. And of course, we're going to answer your questions. I can't wait to hear what you guys thought about this and where you think this trial is going now that the most important and last piece of evidence has gone before the jury because there's nothing left now except for closing arguments. All right. Yes, we are back for our second live of the day. And you guys are here to hang out. Buckle up, because this is not going to be a one-hour stream. It would be impossible to listen to all of this in one hour. We're going to dive into it together. We're going to talk about where we're leaning. We're going to have agreements and disagreements in the chat respectfully and you know, showing grace to each other, even if we disagree. I definitely think there are multiple ways to look at this case. So I appreciate all you guys joining me. Make sure you hit that like button if you haven't already, and make sure you subscribe. Because we've got more videos coming on this case. We've got closing arguments. We've got the verdict, which we'll try to live stream. Live when the verdict is happening. Break it down. Why the jury came to the conclusion that they did. But tonight, we're talking about the defendant testifying. And I don't think anybody was really sur uh, surprised that he testified. Because in a self-defense case like this, it's very common for someone to have to come and explain themselves. Especially when there is kind of a subjective part of this case. What did he think? What did he feel as a 50 something year old out of shape? And he says, basically decrepit, couldn't even run at the stage that he's in. We'll hear him explain all that because of his heart surgery. And to me, it was very important for him to come and testify, but there was a little piece of me that thought he might not testify because of how bad his prior statement was. And the state played his prior statement full of lies, basically that he admits himself they are lies, and they use that big time in his cross. So we're going to hear it, even though we're not going to watch that entire video together of his prior statement that he made right after, before he knew there was a video. That's very important because he's got a pretty good explanation for the story, but how is he going to deal with his own prior statements? We're going to start as the defense started in the day with his direct examination, and they jump right to it, which I am very thankful for. Don't waste a lot of time. The whole jury's on pins and needles. Everybody watching, listening wants to know what did he say happened? How did it happen? How did he feel? What, what was his vision and reaction time like in this altercation? Here's the exhibit number 104, if I could have the screen. Yes. I want to ask you about this exhibit, which says it's from frame 2592 at 149 into the video. Have before? Yes. Do you remember that time? in your life when you were on the river in that position is shown in that photograph? Yes. Sometime after that, did something happen to you? Yes. Were you punched? Not, not after, before sometime that. Sometime after this, were you After punched? that, yes. Okay. I want to talk about the time between this and the time that you get punched, okay? Okay. Um, exhibit number 104 there is on the, uh, with it. Where are you on that? I'm uh, <clears throat> standing in front of two, two ladies. In which, if you were going to just describe the symbol on Exhibit 104 symbolizing you, which one is that? The one with the M. 
Okay. You what color? Do you want to Blue. Um, at that point in time, you said there's two people. People in front of you. Who are those two people in front of you? A blonde lady to my left, and the red had the red hair lady to my right. Were there other? Does this accurately reflect how you remember roughly people in general around you? Yes. The blonde lady in front and the uh, other woman. You understand now that through the trial that the, the blonde woman is named Madison Cohen. Yes. We use her name when possible. Yes. And the uh, you said red-haired woman. Her name's Riley Madison. We use her name when possible. Yes. Possible. So when Riley and Madison and Are standing in front of you at that point, just before you get punched, right? What are they doing? They're yelling at me. Uh, at one point, they were pointing down river and saying, "Go, go, get away." Some ex what are they doing with their hands? They're touching me. When you say touching you, is that something gentle? No, they're pushing. Uh, so, uh, Madison, she pushed against my left shoulder. She she pushed against my chest. She was pointing her finger right at my face. She was yelling at me, very close to my face. Um, right. This is a big part of the discussion. Who put their hands on who first? And he's testifying Madison put her hands on him. And he's going to explain what the physical altercation was between him and the woman who has been a big part of this trial. Did he start this whole thing by punching her, slapping her, whatever? And the state's going to really focus on, oh, well, you should never hit a woman. And I agree with that. But if the woman is the one starting the physical touching when there's 10, 12, 13 people around, I do think that that could change the context a little bit. Uh, some people are asking where he's from. Romania, English is a second language. If you guys want to slow down the speed, you can click this gear button on the video that you're watching. My video, not this video. Obviously, you don't have the ability to click that. Uh, Die Hard says, easy to pick apart in hindsight. I agree. Once you have the video and you can slow it down, freeze frame. This happened pretty fast. I still lean not guilty, stayed overcharged. So what's interesting is um, they could still pick a lesser included. So even if the state overcharged, they could bring a second degree homicide or even a negligent or reckless homicide, which I think may be fitting better. Again, we'll talk. Now, I didn't know they could do that after the fact. Because that's, that's, that's annoying. Because you basically put him at the top charge, see how it goes, and if you feel, oh shit, hang on, um, you know, we might might lose this one. Let's put a load of like less included in there because you got nothing to lose, really. I just don't like, you know, I just don't like that. Um, I the defense did not want it in, um, which I don't blame them. They didn't want him in. You know, there's a reason why the state pushed for it and not um, not the defense. I, I, you know, it doesn't sit sit well with me. Um, so it might actually be the pace. I don't know. These one of those lap tables with fans. I so my my laptop's raised off the ground, but it's I've only got three tabs open now. Isn't set on any kind of cloth or no, it's not, it's not, it's not. Move the turf, move turf. He has no criminal. Hey, hey, AJ, how you doing? He has no criminal record whatsoever, nothing. Nope. The more options you give the jurors, the more likely they are to convict. Yes, because now they're going to come to a compromise. Um, so that ninth year old we're talking about, just be like, okay, we agree with you, it's not going to be first degree, but we do think it's reckless, so please join us for second degree, reckless one or two you know and the second one is i believe 10 to 25 years in prison so these aren't short sentences either none of these i think the minimum he can get is 10 years minimum if he's found guilty on any of the charges 10 years so and maybe deserves it i i don't know i just i don't like the fact that they bring it in afterwards you know if they brought in at the start, fine. We, we, now we're talking. Now we're now we're dicing. 
not at the end when you think we might have lost this case. Um, hiya. Right, let's go back to it. Talk about that later when we get a little closer to um, the time where we discuss the verdict. Riley had her left, had one of her arms, I believe it was left hand, on my right arm, squeezing and pushing me back. And you, when you just gave that description, you put your hands a uh, distance apart. Can you show us that again? How far away were they? About a foot, okay. less than a foot. You've somewhere. heard it described through trial as in your personal space. Would you agree with that? Yes, right in my face, I would describe When it. that was happening, what did it sound like to you? The volume was very, very high. Um, Let me ask you about how your body was responding in that moment when people are pushing you, poking at you, the volume is high. How's your heart, did, could you tell us about what your heart rate was? Oh yeah, uh, my heart rate was getting really high. Um, my, my breathing was getting very high. I was- uh, How about uh, your vision? Did, did you yeah. have normal vision in that moment? No, no, at that moment, uh, because of the situation, I was getting tunnel vision. Can you describe what you mean by you say in tunnel vision? I could see peripheral vision, but I could see center and right before my eyes. How about hearing? How was your, could you hear the noises? Uh, I could hear the volume very high, but I couldn't uh, understand what they were saying. It was, the noise became garbled. I mean, the, the sound became garbled. Did you feel threatened at that point? Uh, yes. Did you have your knife in your right hand? Yes. What did you do with your left hand? With Tell us what you did with your left hand. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. With, so with, with my left hand, I uh, pushed her away from my face. Can you show us what you did with your left hand? Why'd you do that? She were. So that's his explanation as to was there a punch? Was there not a punch? He did this. And maybe in doing this, or actually did it with his left hand, he maybe hit her. And this is one of those situations where does he feel like he has to come up with an explanation? Is he trying to admit that he did hit her, but it wasn't a punch, it wasn't a slap, it was a defensive movement. Yes, he may have hit her. And it kind of fits in with a lot of the victim's testimony that they didn't see the punch or the slap, but they saw her kind of stumbling backwards and that would fit with doing something like this. Uh, Rosie said, you skipped the entire part where Nick put the goggles in his mouth so he could grab the boy's legs. So pretty sure that's on cross. And again, we're going to play as much of it as we can. Um, I, I'm never promised to play every second of the trial on here. That would be impossible, but I think that's coming on cross. Joanne, that's what I am stuck on as a juror. He lies. And Joanne, I think that is huge. And I think jurors really, really stick on that stuff. I think jurors hate when criminal defendants lie, especially when they think they're trying to do it in their own interests. I think his own words are going to be the most difficult thing for him to get over. And we're going to watch the cross and how they're used against him. But I think many a juror has sat back there and be like, gosh, I just can't get over the fact that he even admitted he lied about the most important facts at the most important time before he knew he was on video. That is going to be difficult to get over. Thanks. That's uh, interesting as well because a lot of you in chat have said exactly the same. Like it's going to be hard to get over the um, the lying. So yeah, that that actually plays more of an important part than I thought it might. To be quite honest, yeah, five hours of tree goes. Yes, I know. You, I got to keep myself up because I'm trying to make it transformative. Otherwise, I would take myself off screen for you, ladies. But I have to keep. I will take myself off at, at certain points. Just. Be to drool a little bit more, but um, yeah, five hours of tragos, <laughs> maybe more. A lot of this, too, I see in the chat. Walk away, he was the adult. So I will just tell you in self defense law, legally speaking, even if some of these people were under 18, even if they're younger than he is, even if they're teenagers, 18, 19, 20 years old, they can still pose a threat to somebody physically where they would potentially, if the context is correct respond with deadly force in self-defense. So the fact that they're kids or younger or even smaller doesn't mean they can't present that kind of threat. Uh, Klaj, yes, they can find him guilty of a lower, lesser charge. Eric, Peter, what's up, brother? Appreciate all you do. Curious, if you were on the jury, which way would you be leaning after today? So I'm going to hold this. I said I was leaning not guilty prior to today. But I will say today has made that stance more difficult. We'll talk a little later about whether I've changed over to the other side. Welcome to all the new members, by the way. I see a bunch of people joining. That's awesome. Pumped to have you. She was very close to my face. She was in my personal space. She been, had been there for a while, and uh, I felt threatened. 
Were you, did you intend to harm her in some way? No. Did you try to harm her in some way? Absolutely not. Do you know where, if at all, you had contact with her body when you raised your left hand in that manner? No. Do you think you had contact with her? No. I want to take us out of that space now for a second, okay, Nick? Okay. Um, if I could have the screen again. Um, you, you were here in court when we talked about, um, when we watched the video of you speaking with Brandy Hart, is that right? Yes. And I think you told her about your health condition. Can you just tell the jury now, what was your health like on July 30th of 2022? It was very poor. Yeah. Um, had you, I think you mentioned to her again, had this is really important context that his health was poor because it is how somebody in his situation would feel. There's objective and subjective standards to this. 224A says, brother, you're being slightly biased. The, the word bias is always funny to me because I, I don't think it's used in the proper context a lot on YouTube, especially these kind of videos. Um, her hand being on him doesn't classify as an act of physical harm or potential harm. That is actually law. Also, no stand your ground in Minnesota. So I just, there's a couple things I'll disagree with. Uh, number one, I believe this is in Wisconsin, not Minnesota. And number two, the act of touching somebody can rise to that level depending on other context. Now, if a lady just comes up to me and puts her hand on my shoulder, of course not. But if she starts shoving me while 12 of her friends, a lot of whom are male, are surrounding you, screaming at you, you could at least argue for self-defense. I'm not saying it's guaranteed. It's a question for the jury. And I'm not saying the jury's going to find that she did that. I'm just trying to show how he's explaining it from his position in a way that if you're going to take the stand in your own defense, you've got to explain the first altercation, the first physical contact. And that's how he's trying to explain it in a way that she was touching him first. He did this. Maybe he pushed her. Maybe he didn't. He didn't think he made contact with her. This is all his explanation that the jury is going to have to scrutinize. Quadruple bypass surgery before? Yes, sir. And how? when did you have that? Uh, 2020, about the same month. So about August. Showing you here what's been marked as exhibit number 108. Can you tell us what those are pictures of, starting just on the, on the left? Yep. On the left, it's me um, right after the surgery, um, holding a, a red heart uh, pillow against my surgery. What was the purpose that you knew before that red heart pillow? That was to uh, protect my uh, my. Uh, uh, and by the way, a, a little known you know problem with stand your ground. Stand your ground doesn't mean you can't defend yourself, right? Stand your ground is a very different procedural thing. We have it in my state of Florida. It's not in Wisconsin either. I don't believe so. Whether it's Michigan or Wisconsin, but I'm sure it's Wisconsin. Um, but they don't have stand your ground there either. I don't think. Um, but that doesn't mean he can't stand his ground. That's not what that means. If you're not a stand your ground state, it doesn't mean you can't stand your ground. It's procedurally different in the way that you can get immunity and the way that you can change things procedurally, usually, and arguments you can make. But he can still argue in self-defense even in a not stand your ground um, state. Surgery from hits and pumps. Was that something that the hospital provided? It looks like there's like almost a picture of heart and lungs on there. It is. The, 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 the hospital provided that. And then the picture in the middle, what is that? My first walk. Um, my new life. Did it take you some time to recover and uh, be as active and mobile as you were before? Oh, yeah. Do you think you ever reached the same level of mobility and fitness that you were prior to the quadruple bypass? Never. Uh, what's the picture of you on the right there? <laughs> you can tell us. My baby. Okay. Um, is that a dog? Yeah. Is that dog important to you? My angel. Okay. And that's uh, the cushions helping you to enjoy time with her, but still keeping your chest safe? Yes, sir. You've had other surgeries in the past, is that right? Yes. Did you have a hernia surgery? Two hernia surgeries. Have you had back surgery? Yes. And again, in general, would you consider your fitness, on, if you were going to put it on a scale for July 30th, what would you consider your overall health and fitness on July 30th of 2022? With my weight, then very poor. I want to ask you now about moving on to the Apple River on July 30th, okay? Okay. On that, this, plan, this was a planned trip, is that right? Yes. Did you get a call from your friend Ernesto sometime before that trip? Yes, sir. What was that call about? He wanted to remind me to bring uh, my knife to cut the string uh, when when we tie the, the tubes together. Okay. When you say, do you have a pocket knife? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us about that pocket knife? I own so Before we talk about the pocket knife, there's no duty to retreat there either. Um, that doesn't mean the state can't argue he should have left, things like that. But there's no like automatic duty to retreat again legally and procedurally speaking. FFS. Agree you shouldn't hit a woman, but at what point when a woman is hitting you, can you legally hit back, not go overboard, but just to stop the woman when you're a man and can't retreat? It's supposed to be responding in appropriate force. 
and appropriate force. Stephanie said, uh, I slowed down the video and I hated it. You sound like you're drunk. <laughs> well, I can promise you that's not happening. Um, uh, Jerry Michael, I think this is something when defendants testify that they have to worry about. The jury knows. They got to sit there and listen to everybody else testify before they got to come up there and get their story straight. All of these things are considered and discussed by lawyers and their clients before they testify. Um, Art and Grace, wait, how long after the surgery was the incident? I missed the date. He looked fine in the video, not frail. Not frail, but overweight. I believe it was about a year. I believe it was about a year. Um, the helpful stranger, personally don't mind, but thought it might be a perspective you hadn't thought about. No, I appreciate all the perspectives, all the perspectives. If I'm snarky or I joke or... Right, hang on. That that reminds me of this, right? What do we think of this situation then? I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but this is in the headlines now, so I wanted to share it. So what's your thoughts on this video? So watch it and see what what, what do you think? Hi, Sarah. How are you? How are you, Sarah? Hey, you know, different sentences that he. So, sorry uh, about this. Don't talk. Don't fucking talk. Idiot. Uh, yes, yeah, Sarah, we're really sorry about this and sending him your way today. Fucking... Uh, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, so yeah, she, he's coming. Don't worry, he's coming home. Uh, I'm She's just like all those broke my nose. She's gonna get arrested. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Fuck you, Um. Next time you fucking touch me, I'll fucking dick you. You understand? You understand, cunt? On there. Hey. Um, oh, Sarah, hang up. These idiots, she posted your fucking number in her cancer discord. And I was just be polite. Really, uh, yeah, touch me and I fucking dick your dumbass bitch. I'll fucking dick you. Yes. Yes. Um, as a woman, then dumb I cunt, the dumb cunt, Sarah, the dumb retard in the middle of the session. And you choose she, to leave it under from the chat. She, she, no, she's a she's a fucking insane person. She's a she's a fucking fifty-year-old oh, dumb yeah. cunt oh, yeah? oh, yeah, in the I'm middle 15. of the street okay, dancing. Yeah. Yes, Sarah, I heard you had a kid when you were sixteen. That's what he told me about you. Yeah, she and had he a said kid. you're a dumb Mexican. I said she's and a dumb Mexican. And he said you keep showing up. And he says you won't stop texting him. But I saw what? the text. It's the same shit. Yeah. 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 What's up? I have to pause it for a bit because I want to be for educational purposes. Obviously, I don't want to get struck and. Or anything like that. So I'm um, um, tra transforming the video, shall we say? But yeah, what do you think, guys? What do you think of this? This is hotly debated in the street to the minute. And hello, FM. How are we doing, my darling? Delete the number, please. Ah! 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 Over dumb cunt. Okay. Over dumb. Cunt. No! Ah! Ah! What's going on? Please don't. don't. All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, I'll stop. Pull over. Okay. Pull over, dumb okay, cunt. Please, please, I see that part. I saw the one where she was just waiting on him and telling him how dumb he was and could never get a quarter of the viewers or maybe... Yeah, I mean, are they, I think there's another video as well. Hang on. There's another one of them. You're right, FM. But that essentially all led up to that. So 
you know, what? So just for backstory, she then got arrested for assault. She got arrested for assault. Um... Let's see if there's an update. So yeah, she got arrested for assault. I think she's out now, but she she he didn't get any punishment. It was just her that got the punishment. Um, she was arrested, I believe, on the same day. Um, but it's it goes back to the whole argument that we always have: is that justified? Can you know? Sh- is that okay for her to do? And also, is it okay for him to then retaliate? It's that kind of conversation. I mean, it's apt because of what we're watching right now. You know? Um, I think most people are on the guy side from what I saw, but he has not been arrested at all. I'm not muted. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yellow small bus, Aaron Hack comes again. Thank you, FM. No, he's not. Thank you, FM. You're always behind. That's the problem. You're always behind. So I don't know. It's a conversation piece. It's something that, you know, it's very apt because of what we're covering. Don't get in cars with car is a lesson here. And sorry, you are good. Yes. Um... But I just want to show it because it is relevant nowadays. Um, you know, the people say you shouldn't hit the woman, but like as people say, is does not work both ways. Then you know, is it okay for her to smash his, his nose in? So, if the roles were reversed, would we think differently? Yeah, yeah. She messed up not asking for his manager. <laughs> So anyway, as I say, the, what what happened from that is she she's the only one arrested. She's the only one that um um has been cited for it. He's not got any charges against him. Um, so because I presume they think it's self defense. Was it his car hurt? I think they're together. I think they're like in a relationship or used to be in a relationship. So I think it's a joint car. I I don't know joint. I don't know the ins and outs of it. Just a talking point, you know. Um, I think it's interesting on both sides to look at that, you know. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but people say that it's okay to hit hit women to hit men. It's like, well, she just broke his fucking nose. Do you know what I mean? So is that is that fine, you know? Um she caused this. She did cause it, yes. But it's the, the, the I think the reaction is was his reaction justified at the end, do you know what I mean? Um that's where I'm not sure. That's tough. I've been married almost 25 years. I've never been hit or hit my hubby. I just don't get the mentality, I guess. So not one to say no. But, I mean, if you hit your hubby and broke his nose, I think, you know, small bus will be somewhere. Well, I know if it's your name, you will tell someone to get the fuck out. They have to get out wherever you are. Otherwise, you can do exactly that. Yeah, I don't know job about that one. As in, I don't know whose car it is. So, anyway, back to Trey goes. I just want to show you that just as a conversation piece. Just so, you know, it's not as, you know, we, we've seen this trial. People say, you cannot never hit the woman. Fine. If, if you still believe that, that's fine. Uh, but also, you probably might think differently. So, there's, as I say, wherever that was filmed, I think it's California that was filmed. Um, she's the only one that got uh, arrested. I don't get mad. I just don't get mad. Yeah, well, yeah. But you're also a short ass, so you, you probably can't even reach your husband to hit them. So, my videos train men versus train women on. <laughs> right, here we go. Let's let's get back into this then. Sarcastic with anybody. That's my humor. So, I appreciate all the perspective, disagreements. I love when people disagree with me. I love when they agree with me. Brings new perspective to the table and makes it enjoyable, I think, for everybody. Uh, the Helpful Stranger. Sorry, I should have read this one first. I just, they were out of order. Peter. Uh, get you to listen to things faster, but don't think you realize people who want to be live and be able to interact live lose the ability to adjust your speed the whole video because you like going faster. I get it. I don't have five hours to go through this stuff, so I really try to cram as much in content-wise to share with you guys and react to. I realize there's benefits and 
that, that, you know, risks and benefits, good and bad to every decision that we make. This is where we've landed as a channel. Funded for about 10 years. I had it a lot on me. I uh, use it as a basically a dual tool. Uh, I call it my uh, Swiss Army knife, uh, basically, because it, I use it as a screwdriver. I cut insulation when I do electrical work. I, I do it. I, I use it pretty much everywhere. Okay. I'm an engineer. My tool. Is it um, something that you've carried on your person? I didn't want to say all the time, but somewhat routinely? Yeah. When I knew I was going to work on something or need it for something, yes. Okay. Now I want to skip ahead again now to, to the river, okay? At some point, did Ariel lose his phone? Yes, he did. Did you go to look for that phone? I volunteered to go look for it. When you went to go look for that phone, did you, what were you wearing? Before that? Nope. Right when you, when you oh. left your group to go look for that phone, what were you wearing? So I took my goggles, my snorkel, and my swimming trunks. Did you have anything on your feet? Yes, I had on my feet. I had a pair of really, really torn up uh, uh, sandals. Okay. Sorry. You guys are correct me. Two years. Thank you. Two years after a surgery, I believe. July 2020 was the surgery. Can I approach Judge? Yes. Yeah. Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 113. Is this a pack of the nine photos of your sandals? Yes. Have you seen those? Yes. Does that accurately show the condition of the sandal that you have? Yes. Can you just move the admission of Exhibit 113? The objection? Yes. All right, 113 is received. Okay. These weren't taken by you, were they? Pictures, no. These were taken by the Sheriff's Department, correct? Yes. Uh, permission to publish, Judge? Yes. And I just said we're going to go through the PowerPoint. Can I yeah, just pass it to the jury? Can you use your words? I know we have a picture that better does it, but just briefly describe the condition of those sandals. Horrible. Okay. They, they, were, they were just coming apart. They, they, I couldn't walk on them unless I tried to mend them. Okay. Um, As you can see, I used string, leftover string to mend them. When you left wearing those sandals in your shorts, um, did you have your pocket knife with you? Yes. Where was it? In my right pocket, a clip to my... Did you have that there pretty much all day? Yes. Um, you were here when we watched the video of your interview with Brandy Hart, is that right? Yes. Um, That's the video full of basically lies and inac inaccuracies about what happened that day before he knew there was a video. And that's watching that today and then watching him testify afterwards. I, I didn't think this direct was horrible, um, but that's a struggle. That's definitely going to be a struggle if I was on the jury. It's something I would talk about back there with all of you guys on the jury. Dave, I'm confused. I keep hearing that these were kids. I thought they were college students. Cheers. Honestly, people can call them kids all they want. I think that's strategic by the state. But there's the video. We saw him come testify. I don't want to fight five or six of them. Now, you give me my eight-year-old son, I could take five or six of him and his buddies, but not these guys. Not these guys. Gringa, Peter, if you feel like it, would like your take on the dog-related emotion on the stand. Strategic. Um, probably. I, I don't think it's bad if you show some emotion, show something he loves and cares about. Presentation-wise, he didn't look like a jerk or somebody that was like, looking for a fight or looking to hurt somebody, which I didn't love that kind of strategy from the state right off the jump. We'll talk about that when we get to the cross. Um, but, but I think it's always good if your client can show some real emotion. It felt real to me on the stand. You don't want to press it. It's a fine line. It can backfire horribly. You spoke with Brandy Hart. Were you truthful to her about the knife? No, I lied about the knife. Was that your right there? Admitting that you lied about something as important as the knife in the video I mean, he didn't just tell one lie about this knife. He said it wasn't his knife. He said the kids, the guys, the victims, the people that he fought with and said he defended himself had not one but two knives. And he took one of their knives to defend himself when they were trying to stab him with the knife. And he even stabbed one of them with their own hand holding the knife. Like big lies. He told big lies that were easily refutable once you see the video and you have no choice but to say you lied. Which is why I thought there was actually a slight chance he might not testify. Because whenever you got to get up there and say, yeah, I'm a liar, but believe everything else I'm about to tell you, that's tough. That's tough. I don't care how good of a lawyer you are, that's really tough to overcome. For a knife? Yes, it is. It was. Did you bring it with you uh, when you went to go uh, look for the phone? Yes, I did. When you went to go look for the phone, did you have any intent to harm anybody? No. Why'd you go leave your group? Go look for the phone. Okay. At some point, did you have some contact with uh, a group of uh, teenagers? Yes. Um, and you were here in court when we uh, saw the nine second video. Is that right? Yes. I want to show you just a, a couple of slides from that, if I could. Do you, uh, you see those slides up there? Yes. Are those from that video? Yes. What are you uh, doing 
in those three slides in general? I was scanning the water looking for the phone. And are you in that position, are you walking upriver or downriver? Upriver, away from the from that group of uh, boys. Did you hear them say some things to you? Yes. Prior to your walking upriver and them, uh, did you hear those words that I have written on that slide? Yes. Prior to your hearing those words when you were walking upriver, had you had verbal contact with that group? I think this is a good use of, of slides by the defense to put kind of where he was and that they're screaming at him and saying things like this. Now, again, prosecution does a good job being like, you started walking away. Why didn't you just stay away? Because you didn't like what they were saying and you wanted to come back and handle it physically, right? Again, thinking you want to pick a fight with these kids is probably not something I am really buying, but did he take it overboard? That's that's a question. I think they, so. They asked me what I was looking for and I told them I'm, I'm looking for a phone, a lost phone. Did you ever tell them that you were looking for little girls? No. Were you looking for little girls? Absolutely not. It's pathetic. Um, when you, at the end of this, when you, you watch the video, at the end of the video, where I'm not going to play it, but do you remember what you did right there at the end? At the end, I was walking away. Did you eventually turn around and face in the direction of the group that was yelling at you and calling you a raper? Yes. When you, yes. Let's get to the sidebar. Did you ever become in a position where you uh, were looking at that group of teenagers that had yelled at you? Yes. Um, what did you see when you were looking at that group of teenagers after the end of this video? I uh, saw them. I saw one of them holding a, a phone in a bag, um, and I believed it was what I was looking for. So I turned around and I started approaching them. Why did you approach that? I wanted to get a closer look at the phone to see if it was the one that I was uh, that belonged to Aya. Um, did you eventually? Get near them? Yes, I, uh, I, I started walking, then I uh, rushed the pace, uh, stumbled, and fell on my knees, held onto their tube, um, at which point I lost my, my goggle and snorkel kit in the water. Do you, do you saw Again, not how he described it in the interview, but we're going to dig more into that on cross. On the video, or excuse me, you saw during your interview with Brandy Hart that you said things different than what you just said now about what happened to your snorkel and goggles. Mm -hmm. right. Is that right? Uh, yes. Is your memory sometimes different than what you see in the video? Yes. Was your memory, in your memory, what happened to your goggles? In my memory, the goggles got um, knocked away. Knocked away. Yeah. So, got when there's an objection, just put under it. Uh, it is leading. Sustained. Next question, please. It's a leading question. Let's move on. Um. <laughs> is your memory perfect? Never. Um, now that you've watched the video, do you realize that the difference between misremembering or not remembering and lying? He already admitted he lied. So then try to couch it in a memory issue. That's tough, man. That's tough. It's tough. You were wrong about that? Yes. Um, what happened to your goggles? My goggles uh, uh, fell in the water. When they fell in the water, what did you do? I started looking for them, searching right where they fell. Um, I, oops, not already. Showing you here uh, some slides 220, 225, and 279. Can you tell us what you're doing? I'm searching for the, the goggle kit. And where are you in relation to the six teenagers' tubes? Are you on the side? Are you upriver? Are you downriver? Are you in some other position? I'm upriver. So, um, yeah. I'm going to then show you another group of slides, 575, 600, and 625. What does that show you doing? All right. So what I did from that point, I went around the, the inner tubes to the other side, and I continued looking for the goggle and snorkel set. Why did you walk around from the one side to get to the other side of the tubes? <laughs> Um, well, I, I, I thought that the water curve. Yeah, uh, KGB, I, I think that that's going to be a big one. That's going to be a big one. And Alyssa asks a similar question. Can what they do after be important showing conscious of guilt? If the jury finds that that's conscious of guilt, then yes. If they find that even he didn't believe it was self-defense at the time and he concocted this defense with his lawyers, they can reject the claim of self-defense. Um, if they find that the state did in fact prove this beyond a reasonable doubt. Paw printed heart. I, I'm, I'm not saying they weren't legally minors, right? But that still doesn't mean that you can't be in fear for your life if a bunch of 16 and 17 year old boys are encircling you, punching you. Again, I'm not saying a jury has to find that in this case. I'm just saying there is a context in which a group of 16 or 17 year old boys could create a fear of death or serious bodily harm. Current, current would, uh, would, would bring him over to the other side, and I was walking away. From the boys at the same time. Okay. Um, during that time that you walked in that direction, did you have any physical contact with them? No. Were you confronting them? No. Oh. Didn't say a word. This next set of slides, um, 
what is this show you doing here? I'm walking away from from the group. Still, Why? go ahead. I'm looking. I'm looking. Still looking for my goggles at, at that time. When you were doing that, did you ever hear the kids say anything? They gave me a warning. What they say? You got ten seconds. Uh, in response to that, what did you do? Like we're supposed to believe he remembers that. We're supposed to believe that he remembers that. It's wild to me that he remembers that they gave him 10 seconds. It's like a split second statement. Now we've heard his lawyers ask like every witness that John, was he hit slash attacked first? Well, he says he was, everybody else says he hit the blonde girl as they call her first. I ignored them and I actually continued doing what I was doing. Okay. I'll show you the next set of slides here. Um, were you in a position to see here 963, 1140, and 1155 what the teenagers were doing behind you? They were getting closer and closer to me. They were walking towards me. Were you in a position to see that? Was that behind you or had you turned around? Uh, well, I could hear their voices. I could hear that they were getting closer. At some point, uh, um, I may have turned my head and witnessed that. They're coming towards me. Showing you 1170, 1213, and 1284. What do you, what's happening here? I'm, uh, I have basically, I'm at an angle to them, but I, could say I had my back at them, um, still standing the water, and they were right behind me. I got that close. They, within seconds, they were right behind me. At some point, did you see other people from another group? Yes. What uh, did you see? Um, I saw uh, what I seemed to me at the time, uh, adults coming over from the other side of the river. And when you saw um, adults coming over from the other side of the river, what did you do? I uh, walked towards them. I walked towards this. The first one was a... Uh, a it was Madison. When you walked towards Madison, where were the six teenage boys that had been yelling at you? They were following me. Were you in their path as you walked across the river towards Madison? No. Did they have a peer, as far as you know, did they have a clear path down the river if they wanted? More than plenty. Can I? And again, bringing up the fact that they had a clear path. Also, to Chris's point, he had a clear path too. He could have left too. But Jen makes a good point. Everyone with the opinions. He was in inches of water. He should have walked away, et cetera. Have you ever been attacked by a group of younger people in the water, which changes your ability to fight back until you've been there? You can't, except that the jury's going to have to do that in this case, right? And that's the interesting part about jury duty and jury service. As I agree with you, it's really hard to know how you'd react, which is why you have to build as lawyers. You have to recreate the scene objectively for what everybody was seeing and thinking. In a $300 super chat. What the... Also, what a waste, because most of that goes to YouTube. Literally, most of that $300 goes to YouTube. But, wow, that's enough money. Jesus. YouTube must be like, whoa, this tree goes, guy. Hey, Wendy H. How is you, my darling? Hope you're well. I w I'm not sure if you were here yesterday. I did show your buy me a coffee stuff as well, and uh, we did thank you as well. I wasn't sure if you were here at that time, but... Thank you, as always, Wendy, for your support. Uh, it's good to see you. Dave's not here today. David isn't here today for some reason. I'm not sure why not. But the hamburger's not around. I saw that. Now when she gives memberships and sends SCs like that a lot. Wendy H. Right. It's interesting speaking about Tregos as well. I, I agree, you know. I I don't know why I would how I would act in the situation. I don't know how I would act in the situation, but Tragos is right. There's 12 jurors who have gone to have to make a decision on that. I don't know how I'd react. We can speculate, but there's 12 jurors out there who, that are going to have to speculate. So, yeah, that's a good point. I, I haven't thought about that. Um, uh, taco, taco, taco. Emma Lou, hey Em, I don't think his attorney was aggressive enough. It what in this one, or do you mean in the closing or something? I still go by. I didn't like that. I can't believe the defense rested as they did. I think that was a mistake on the defense. Wendy H, have you watched this? Do you have opinions this case? Oh, and also, so Wendy is a new Beaver, 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 Beaver. Wendy, Erin has handed that over to Wendy now. Wendy is now Beaver. Um, I've been almost attacked by a group of young people in the water. I've actually experienced, oh, you've experienced a similar situation. I I'd be interested to see how you act, Wendy. I mean, I'm not sure how I would. It in his health condition, 
and stuff. I'm not sure how I'd act. But I also like what Trigo said about forget about these are kids. Stop calling them kids. They they're big kids. If you want to call them kids, they're big. Um the closings were full of opinions. I suppose though, Kim, that, that's the thing, isn't it? Uh, and it goes back to what Trigo said, saying, um, it will all it's all gonna um land on the jury's opinion of what happened. And well, I mean, it doesn't matter what we all think, obviously, but this is very much an opinion based trial in some sense. Um it depends where you land. Oh, my poor Wendy. Ah, yes. I reacted physically in defense of myself in the water, only had an awe. Yeah, I, you know, as you say, you've experienced it, you know. I think I would probably defend myself as well, to be quite honest with you. Um, but I, I, that's where I sit. I think I, I would defend myself. But again, I've not been in that situation. But as a juror, I, that's why I lean where I, the way I lean. Because I think I would be scared. Um, that is scary. Wow, I had no idea how scary. It was impossible with the water and raft to protect myself. Luckily, my standing up and challenging them made them back up. Well, that's the difference, isn't it? Thankfully, they backed off, Wendy. Because, you know, I can't imagine, like... You know, you're fearing, you are. I, I don't even want to think about it. I'm just glad that you're okay, Wendy. And they backed off. I'm just glad of that. Um, apparently, he also had unconfirmed childhood trauma. Yeah, I've heard that. I've not even, I've not, um, I've not even thought about that, to be honest with you, AJ, only because it, I don't believe that was submitted in as evidence. But I have heard that on the grapevine as well. Um, it might have been a hackster that told me that. I'm not sure. Somebody told me that as well. Um, it was awful. I can only imagine. I can only imagine, Wendy. Um, it'd be awful for anybody, no matter what your gender is, I think, in that situation. Um, right, let's see a little bit more about our love boat, Tragos. What a reasonable person would think, but also subjectively, what a reasonable person in his position would see, think, and do. FFS, respond in appropriate force. Who actually decides what's appropriate? The jury, once you're charged, by the way, coming from Ball Harbor, Florida, it seems messy. It's definitely messy. It's not an easy case. But yes, the jury's going to decide today. I shouldn't say today. In this case, if he used appropriate force and if this was self-defense. But there are other lines of defense, as you can call them, or gatekeepers, law enforcement, the state attorney's office, judges who help in the process before somebody's arrested and charged, probable cause. Those types of things are all decided before we get here. So other people have looked at this and felt he did not use appropriate force. Uh, Die Hard said, can you explain how the state can add lesser charges after trial starts if added today, basically at the end of trial? So some states allow that. It seems unfair, but some states allow lesser included. Others don't. Others say you charge what you charge and that's what you live with. You better pick the right charge. I prefer that. Culper, everyone else who witnessed the event, including people who had no dog in the fight, claimed that Mew was the aggressor. Alex, I don't see a reason for them to change stance because of him not mentioning the push sub all those teens lied for days during the testimony a guilty verdict would be very disappointing um pity mom i had triple bypass surgery a year ago this past january realizing everyone is different and recovers differently if his health is as bad as he claims why was he river rafting is that a fairly physical demanding activity interesting you would point this out pity mom i appreciate you sharing your perspective with us and this is what's so cool is everybody brings different things to the table and can tell us like, hey, she had it a year ago. I guess his was two years ago, so that's a little bit different. I hope you're recovering well. But the state digs in to that exact question. So you're thinking like a prosecutor here to focus in and scrutinize some of the things he's saying. If he's using his frailness or being old and weak as a defense, they're going to also use it and say, were you really that old and weak and out of shape? And we're going to hear that. Thank you for the super chat. Showing you this next group of photos. Um, what did you? What's going on here? So um, in this frame here, uh, the left, uh, the, the first adult that came to me was Madison. She already had her finger pointing downriver and yelling at me and and used some awkward words, ordering me to go down. We see your. It looks like you're doing something with your right hand. Do you remember what are you doing with your right hand? Yep, I was uh, trying to explain to her what I'm looking for. 
when you tried to explain to her what you were looking for, did you get the impression she was listening to you? No, her voice was too loud to. Okay. Hold on, hold on, wait a second. Just saying, speculation. I'm asking about his impression. So I'll rephrase. I'll just. Did you get the impression that Madison Cohen was going to listen to your words? No. Why not? Because she was too loud. She never stopped to give me a chance to talk, and she kept pointing and ordering me to go down, down river. We've all heard the tape, but just. Did you feel like Madison was going to give you the opportunity to use your words? I mean, again, this is where the walk away comes into play, right? This is where the walk away comes into play, like Michelle said. First aggressor can't, but he's obviously not claiming he's the first aggressor. Um, and But there was like pauses, and they're going to get into that on cross, excruciating detail about, well, it could have stopped now. You could have walked away now easily. And the jury's going to have to determine this exact question. Debbie J., I feel like he was terrorized by the mob, but he should have walked away. And the fact that he lied has me thinking he is more guilty than not. So the fact that so many of you guys are talking about walking away and consciousness of guilt, that is likely to be something that the jury is going to talk about as well. So that's the point. That's what's so cool about you know this channel and discussing this stuff in real time. You guys are perspective and potential jurors in the jurisdictions in which you live. So your questions, comments, and feelings, we're not going to agree always, obviously, with 6,000 people in the chat. We're not all going to see it the same way. Hopefully, we've all hit the like button. But we're not all going to see this case the same way. We're going to discuss it. People are going to explain why they're at where they're at. That's what the jury's going to do in the jury room. Was she using polite language? All right, no. Did you hear anyone saying anything behind you when you walked over to Madison Cohen? Yes, they're all calling me names. Okay. Showing you the next set of slides here, uh, 1776, 1840, and 1824. What are you doing uh, here in this set of slides? I'm turning my back uh, towards uh, Madison and the rest of the people. Why did you turn your back to Madison and the rest of the people? It felt to me like I couldn't have a conversation with her at that point. She was not listening. And I didn't want to I didn't want to interact any further. Had you at that point found your snorkel or goggles? No. Had you at that point found the phone? No. Did you hear anybody saying anything? While you stood there with their back to them? Oh, yeah. What did you hear? They were still yelling, he's looking for uh, little girls. Were you looking for little girls? Absolutely not. When you heard them, did you consider that to be a lie? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Did you consider that to be a lie? I don't yes, think of course. Please. Don't think that's sustained. I sustain the objection. Please move on. When you heard that, did you consider it to be truthful or did you consider it to be untrue? Right. Two seconds. i got to show this because... Drum roll, everybody. Drum roll. Welcome to our newest member. Erin Hack is now a member. Congratulations, Erin. Erin has now become a member of the alternate corner. Thank you, Erin, for that. You you ended up joining in the end. Um, so thank you very much for your support, as always. Thank you to everybody for your support, as always. Um, right. Sorry, I just want to show that quickly. Um, Let's get back to Tregos. Alternate corner. Untrue. And when you heard someone say an untruth about you, did that change how you were feeling? I uh, felt frustrated. I felt annoyed. They kept saying it over and over, so it annoyed me and frustrated me. And when you heard them say this untruth about you, did it appear to you as if the other group that had come over agreed with what these kids, the, the teenagers were yelling about you? Same thing. Did you think anybody in the other group was going to help you or listen to you when you were being called these names and accused of being a pedophile? Same. How did you feel? Well, I, I felt overwhelmed at that point. I felt still annoyed, frustrated. I felt like she wasn't listening. She was the adult I, I thought I was going to to reason with or get help from. She didn't obviously didn't even attempt to reprimand the children from yelling. Showing you another slide here. Um, some 1838, 1846, and 1865. Is that you? Yes. What are you doing? Yes. Another sidebar. Let me skip through this. See, there's uh, the, the Alex, do you think the jury ages is a good thing for the defendant? Yes. So apparently it's a very, it's an elderly jury, people in their 90s and 70s and 
fifties and people his age and older. Also the teens lied for days. I don't think him not mentioning the shove is a stance changer. Um, honestly, a lot of memories faded in this case rather quickly. Melissa confused as to why he was looking for the cell phone so far away from his group. If it went that far downstream, you're never going to find it. Seems like he was coming after the kids who had floated further downstream. So Melissa, my question would be, did you watch cross-examination? You probably did. Cause this is kind of a theory of the States. I just also, I agree with you. It's weird. Why was he over there? It doesn't really make a lot of sense, but you know what else doesn't make sense? This guy picking a fight with a bunch of teenage dudes. I don't, I don't get that either. That doesn't track either. Vicky with a Y said, at my age, I call 20 plus year olds kids. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any problem with that. Um, Kelly, I would like to know who has watched the stills of the video and compare to the testimony. Both sides were wrong, but he lied and pretended he heard about it. Yeah. I mean, I think the stills, I don't want to say have been manipulated, but they've been used so much by both sides. I almost feel like the video could tell any story at this point, right? They're both trying to tell us what the video shows, but what I know about juries, they trust their own eyes and ears more than anything. So I hope they use the jury instructions on intentional homicide or second degree or unintentional, whatever they come down with and self-defense. And they watch the video and listen to the video with their own eyes and ears. That's what I think they're going to do. Joanne, sorry, I just don't buy that he has memory loss, but remembers a threatening statement. That's tough for me too. It's tough for me too. The group of people. In the two photos there, which direction are you looking? I'm looking down river. Okay. Are you looking at, uh, there's two different. Good morning, Josie. How are you? Wendy H, I'll be driving for some time. I'll be listening though. Free Zachary Anderson. Thank you, Wendy, for always listening and supporting me. Free Zachary Anderson, absolutely. Um, as always. Um, I always mention the free Zachary Anderson sign is also what's being used for Karen Reed now as well. So um thank you, Wendy, for joining us as always. Uh good morning, Josie from Kim. Josie, you had a lie in today. Josie had a lie in today. <laughs> But it's all good. It's all gravy. So just so you know, Josie, and I'll update everyone here as well. Um, because obviously, just so you know, um the this morning at eight o'clock central time, they did um show the video again as well. Um so they did show that. Um hang on. So they've they've watched it now. I believe the hackster told me that they've watched it three times now. As a reminder, they do not have the video back with them. They have to request every time they want to watch it, and both um, parties have to agree for them to rewatch it. So they've watched it three times now. Um, Wrongful is making a live stream debut tonight on Sol's channel. E you'll be wonderful. I mean, all you need to do. Is turn up, Josie. That voice of yours is gonna, it's gonna carry. Do you know what I mean? Uh, what a wonderful voice! You've never heard what Josie's voice. Then head over to wrongful, wrongfulpod.com and listen to her. She is the voice of the wrongful pod. Um, most of you here probably have watched it, but if you haven't, go and watch it. And this evening, go and join uh, our lovely Josie and the rest of the crew uh, of Wrongful Pod as they. Um, uh, as they are on uh, Saul's channel, he's doing a rewatch with um, um, for the Zachariah trial, um, and I believe it's Saul and David MLS will be um, there with the Wrongful Pod girls, the Wrongful Girls. Um, I saw call them girls, women, but they're girls. That's awesome, Josie. So best of luck for Josie tonight. Um, you will smash it. I know you will. Um, I, this is like a super chat thing now. So we got another one. We got so not only is Erin Hack a member, she's also bought five coffees. Thank you, Erin Hack. Thanks for covering this trial. Also, thanks for supporting David. He means a lot. Not to worry at all. You know that. And thank you to you, Erin Hack, as always, for being a brand new mod. Thanks for bringing your pink eye to the chat. Uh, we wouldn't have you any other way. Um, you're a wonderful addition to this channel. So thank you. Um, I've not seen you for ages for a trial, so I've loved having you here. And also, breaking news, obviously, Aaron will be joining us for Karen Reed trial as well. So, um, 
you like Erin and her chat and uh, her yellow yellow bus, small bus comments, then uh, come and join us for Karen Reed as of next Tuesday. But again, thank you, Erin. Much delighted and thankful of your support. But yeah, not an issue um, of supporting David. As, as I say, I've always said, not just about David, about content creators, but we won't go into it um, too much, but not a problem, Erin, at all. Uh, thank you. Right, let's get back to Trigos for that. Chinny. Hello. Hello, Chini. How are we doing? Pondu. Pondu? Pondu? Chiu? Chini Pondu. I think that's it. I don't want to misspell your name, but Chini Pondu. We'll call you that. If it's wrong, shout to me. But hello, Chini. How are you, my darling? Um, right, let's go back to Trigos. I will play it in a second. Um, before that, Pink Eye Erin. You should do it, Erin. Pink Eye Hack. Um, Hugs, we are currently getting our tires replaced, so I don't have to get go get air every other day. Oh no, that's a nightmare. I hate tires that um don't perform correctly. But good news that you're getting new tires. Um not good news when you get the bill, but still, but as always, Chrissy, welcome. And hopefully again, Chrissy's another one. Hopefully we join us next Tuesday for the current retrial as Sean El Hefe. LFA McDonough, you will be joining us as well for the whole trial. Right, here we go. Love boat. He's a love boat. He's a love boat. Peter Trigos. Different groups, if I recall, from exhibit 104. Is that right? Yes. One came from one side of the river and the other one's on the other side of the river. Correct. Which, where are you in the photo on the upper left? Are you looking at one particular group as opposed to another group? Yes, I'm looking at the, the boys' group. And why are you looking at the boys' group? Because they were yelling at me. And what were they yelling at you? They were yelling things that were not true and pointing at me. When this, I want to, after that happened, showing you the next group of slides, 1875, 1883, and 1889, do you remember what Madison did, if anything, to you? Yeah. What she, did she do? <clears throat> she grabbed my right arm and she pulled me towards her and I lost my balance. So I moved towards her. Did you consider that in that circumstance to be a gentle or a gracious touch? No, that was not a gracious touch. No, not at all. Had she been using any gentle or gracious words? Again, they, they, are using everything they can. Did you think that was a gracious touch? She grabbed my arm, fell me off, made me off balance. Hang on, there's movement in the court. Movement in the court, so hang on. Where's it going? Oh, yeah, shit, I've closed it down, that's why. Hang on, I will get it. Go in again, two seconds. Love boat, he's a love boat. Pete Tree goes, love boat, he's a love boat. Um, hi, Ozzy. Hey, just a quick hello from bed. Watching on the big screen. Happy days, Ozzy. Hello, Ozzy. How are you doing, my darling? Hope you're well out there in Australia. Good day, mate. Okay, so I've seen it rumble, so that's why I'm coming here. It might be nothing, but I'm going to leave us here. Move that down there. Let's have a look. If there's any announcements on Twitter. Oh, my darling, please, please, my darling, I hunger for your touch along lonely my titi. Where is this? 
Let's let's get ready, ready, let's get ready, ready, let's get ready to rumble. Sonic. Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready, ready, let's get ready to rumble. Nothing on the news, nothing on the news, nothing on the news. Papa. Um, hang on. I'm on Twitter land trying to see if there's anything news about what's going on. Let's do Nikolai Mills. Fuck off. I don't know. Nikolai Mills. No, no news. I just I just saw him move. So I saw some heads going back and forward. That's why I'm like, oh, are they back in court? Right. I can't see anything, but I'll leave you here for like five, ten minutes because I don't miss anything now. Do you know what I mean? Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready because we're ready to rumble. Da, 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 I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. We'll leave it for five minutes at least, just in case. And if there's no movement, we will go back to Trigos. But I definitely have seen movement. Most of you think that deliberations verdict would be today. 58% of you. 9% think Friday morning. 27% think Friday afternoon. And 6% of you think next week. There you go. That's based on 33 votes. Hope you've heard it before you go to sleep. Yes. Um, it's late. Late for you. Over there in Australia. Oh. Why? why? I, I mean, this must be a false alarm. But I have definitely seen the camera shake and I've definitely seen heads go back and forward. Oh, welcome to America. Oh, so I'm going to leave it here till quarter two. But I've not seen any announcements or anything online. But this is the level of service you get from me. Just always eyes out watching. You are my fire, my only desire, and you, ba ba ba, I want it that way. Di 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 ba 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 be 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 be. I want it that way. I said I want it that way. Well, it doesn't look like anything's happening. And let's have a look on Twitter, on Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Nikolai Mihu, Nikolai Mihu. No. Hey, nothing but a great. Okay, I can't see anything. I'll give it another minute, and then we we'll go back to back to tree ghosts. He's a love boat, he's a love boat, 
Peter Trigo. I just thought there might be a question or something. I didn't think it was a verdict, but I thought there might be a question. Ba ba be ba 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 be 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 I'm singing because Wendy's in the car, so I've got to keep her entertained. Wendy, 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 Where's the hamburger? I don't know. Wendy, Wendy H. Right, let's stop screen this. Nothing happening. Let's get three goes back up, and then if anything happens, I'll go straight back to it. I got everything ready. I got everything ready to go. And again, it all adds to the fear and what he's going through, and they're trying to set the scene. The problem is, early on, I think it's harder to set the scene. Later, when he gets shoved and hit and punched and encircled and grabbed and hit in the throat, And whatever it is, sure, sure. There's no doubt in my mind that's a recipe for self-defense, that he was absolutely in fear for his life. But if he started it and they were defending a third party, meaning these women that he, you know, hit, pushed, whatever, that's where it come, becomes really difficult to just completely say self-defense, not guilty. Words with you? Not that, no, not that I remember. Um, in those photos, can we see the footwear that you were wearing on that day? Yep, those sandals that we saw earlier. Did you have confidence in your footing in that area with those sandals? It's the same. How did you feel about your footing in that area? Very unstable. Then why wear the sandals? Like the, that, the sandals argument is again, like they're trying, if in case you're wondering, right? So what are the lawyers trying to do here? What's the purpose of this question, these set of questions? They are trying to create a scene where he's unstable, old, unhealthy, decrepit, post-surgery, scared, doesn't know what's going on, losing his bearings, losing his footing because of his bad sandals, didn't have his goggles. They're trying to create that, and they're using everything they can, including those sandals. But it's like he chose to wear those sandals. He was able to navigate around the river all day. He was able to navigate back up and down the hills or however they walked to and from their cars. But yet we're supposed to believe that these sandals somehow made him more scared. I don't know. I mean, I think if, if a pair of shoes made me scared and unstable, I think I'd stop wearing them. Right? Am I crazy there? I uh, want to show you the next set of slides here. Uh, do you remember uh, what you say to Madison after she um, pulled on your right arm? Yeah, I told her not to touch me. And why did you tell her that? Because she pulled on me without my uh, my invitation. Um, were you? Did you say that in any particular tone? No, not in a mean tone, but I, I made it sound so she could hear me. Don't touch me. Why didn't you want her to touch you? I didn't give her permission to do so. Sure, but why did you not want to give her permission to do so? Because she was one mind, one track mind. She just wanted to get me away from that, point me down river and tell me to go there. What's your comfort level at this point? Um, <clears throat> on a scale from uh, one to, to 10, comfort level is very low. Okay. And again, they do a good job of explaining how it escalates and boils and gets scarier for him and things like that. I do like the way they set that up. Paw printed heart, his lies and memory loss during the prosecution's questions killed me. You remember when your team asked, but major memory loss when the other side asked, especially when they asked about that interview, that was just really rough for him. Uh, Culper, if he started the fight and then started losing and was genuinely afraid, does that give him the right to use lethal force? No, no. Jen, I'm a psychologist. Shock and PSD definitely causes memory loss, which is why SA cases are hard because victims have trouble remembering. I work with victims of SA. Trauma is trauma. Uh, depends on your brain process if the defense should have had a psych testify. So yeah, we've seen this and we've actually seen um, defense experts testify to like how quickly things happen, how your awareness changes and your perception changes when you're in these types of events. Are you, um, if you had that same thing, a scale of like a fear scale, a one to 10 fear scale, right? And yeah. so with 10 being the most fearful you've ever been in your life and, and zero, let's call zero to 10 being the most safe you've ever been. Mm -hmm. Where are you at here on a fear scale? In that particular? Uh, yeah. 
About one. Okay. So you're more uncomfortable, but not necessarily afraid. Is that what I understand? Correct. At, um, where was your group in relation to you then? Was upriver. And did you do anything in order of in relation to your group? Yep. What did I, you do? I, I turned to them and I, I uh, called them. I was trying to call them to to come over and help me. Is are these slides? Does this twenty one twenty seven, twenty one forty, twenty one thirty one? What does that show you doing? I was waving at them and calling them to to come over. When you say you were calling them, did you do something physical or did you do something verbal or did you do both? Physical. Did you make any verbal comments at that point? No. Why not? It was very loud. All around me was very loud. I don't think that anybody could have heard me at 100 and some feet away. With everybody else yelling, did you think your yelling was going to de-escalate or escalate the situation? Uh, when everybody's uh, uh, raising their voice, I don't think having another raised voice would help the situation. So Netwoman hits on this. Thank you for the large super chat, Netwoman. Um, where was the friend that owned the phone? Sad that he just walk away over words. His words alone, he said that Madison told him to leave. It seems his ego played a part in refusing to walk away. He was over there for so long before he decided that he was in fear. And I also saw some other comments saying he didn't come there with any intent to hurt anybody. And I think that's 100% true. But where are the lines? The jury has to determine. Hi, Carl. Welcome, Carl. First time for Carl to be on the channel. So welcome to you, sir. Hope you're well. Um, where the fuck am I going there? Netwoman. Two hundred dollars, motherfucker. Does she know like that's great? But I mean, half that's gone to YouTube. Jesus, that's a lot of money. Uh, but anyway, hello, Carl. Thank you, Josie. Such a beautiful serenade for Wendy H. I I had to because Hamburger's not here. Where's Dave? Dave Hamburger's not here. Um, <laughs> half in love with it. Um, here we go again then where the lines are did he think they're not going to say that to me to me and get away Man, no joke right i'm not joking here right if i was sent to me 200 dollars, right youtube takes 30 percent apple or google take 10 percent, so that's 40 percent gone conversion rate and i have to pay 20 percent tax on it so that's 60 percent plus conversion rate i'd probably get about 60 pounds or 65 pounds maybe So I probably would have got about seventy, eighty dollars of that. That's the sad part about it. That's the sad part about it. It pains me to see it because you know it pains me honestly to see it because I don't think people realize how much money goes. Uh, I feel sorry for it. I Pete is like chuffed, obviously, because in America he's probably going to get. Of that, he will get about 24, 60, 80, 120, about $120 because he doesn't have to pay VAT on it like I do. If if that was £200 UK, I would get a chunk of that as well. But from America to me, I have to pay them taxes, additional taxes. But that's sad. I, it, it pains me to see YouTube win money, especially what they do into content creators these days. Fuck them is what I think. But yeah, generous though, it is generous, don't get me wrong. But jeez, it saddens me. Um, they get our data, yes. Yes, and especially if you pay through Apple and Google as well. There's more people that get your data. Neil Mohan is an asshole. Who's that? He pays YouTube and taxes on it, so he gets less. He pays YouTube and taxes. I do, yes. But it's the it's, it's, it's same though. Um, but also, Peter probably has to pay taxes on as well because he's got th probably a threshold as well. You know, really Android users who pay. But it's not to complain. It's not complaining about that. It's just... It's a CEO. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Like, what I'm saying is there's a difference between $20 and to see $200. It's like... Netwoman's very generous, but it's like... YouTube are like licking their lips, going, Jesus, this net woman, let's follow her around. Ah, uh, here he is. Wendy's driving. So, Wendy, Wendy, Dave is here. Go, go, gaga, go, go, gaga. Uh, he is in the house. 
Um, so Wendy, on your drive, just remember Dave is here for you waiting. It's a lot of money for big corporations. Yes. Yes, I read that, Stacey. I read that um, on, on Twitter and that uh, he died. So, yeah, OJ Simpson's died. Um, I don't know. I don't know, Dave. Yeah, apparently so. Um, it's all it's all over Twitter anyway. Um, hang on. OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson. Um, yeah, RIP. Everyone's got RIP. RIP. We are just heaven just got enough sunny running back. Yeah, I think there's a mixed review as about as that to be fair. Yeah, I have not seen where it says anything about how he died, but oh OJ Simpson is dead after batting cancer, according to his family. That's Brian Entin who says that. Brian Entin has confirmed. Audrey Simpson is dead after battling cancer, according to his family. I mean, the jokes are out on it already. I mean, he's not even... Jeez, he's not even cold and the jokes are coming out. Um, Dave, we thought you were the 90-year-old on the jury. <laughs> we thought you were on the jury, Dave. Let us know what's happening. Wendy sent some hearts. Oh, thank you, Wendy, my darling. Do you like your lady friend I sent you? No, I only lasted four seconds, two seconds, Dave. That was awful. I couldn't. If I sound like that, please tell me. Please tell me I don't sound like that. Jesus Christ. Sitting aboard, so I looked. Ah. Good, Chrissy. Make sure you get a good deal on those tyres. Best running back I ever seen. Yeah, I mean, look. He was obviously a great football player, but um, you know, not a um, great human being. I hope he finds peace and the victims of him find comfort. Yes, Wendy, the flowers are out. The flowers are out. You know what? Wendy's driving day, so Wendy, he sent you two roses. I think they are or tulips, wherever they are. It's an over, Dave. Oh, do you're going to, Chrissy, you're going to make Jonathan very mad. Jonathan was like, buy the expensive tyres, the better for you. Jonathan being in chat now, going, what the hell? And both the fish putting them on. There we are. Right, let's see what else that woman's got. And uh, wait, wait, I'm going to trade goes ago. Go get him. Get him. Did they start the altercation with him because... They were bored and just wanted to mess with this old guy that was annoying them or bothering them. And then it turned into a self-defense uh, situation. It's tough. He was over there for so long before he started, decided that he was in fear. Thank you for the night live. Yeah, I mean, the other thing, like where his friends were, he says he called to them and they couldn't hear him and he didn't want to keep screaming because that would escalate the situation even more. I don't know that type of stuff goes through people's heads, but maybe it does. But he does try to explain it because he knows, like you, People are going to have that question. Um, after you raised your hand to call for your friends, did you see Madison Cohn doing anything? Oh, yeah. She was uh, looking at towards her group, and then she waved to them to come over to uh, to her. Did, is that what we're seeing here in 2261, 2262, and 2263? What do you see? Yep. She's calling her, uh, her group over. Did you remember when she called her group over? Did her group respond? Yes. Or did they join that? Yeah. So, Ashley, I'm, I'm not saying he's old like I think he's old. The defense is trying to portray him as an old, decrepit, sick, out-of-shape man. That's what they're trying to do. It's very common in self-defense cases. Yes. Showing you now these slides, is that what you saw? Yes. Um, I think we saw, asked you questions before about Exhibit 104 with you with the blue dot and the other red dots. When you were, eventually, were you standing there with other people around you? Yes. When you were standing there in that moment with the other people around you after you've called your friends once, was that other group, did they appear to be afraid to you? Afraid for me? Afraid. Did they appear? When you look at them, do they look like they're in fear? No, absolutely What does it look not. like to you? They're all laughing and enjoying themselves. At whose expense? At my expense. And again, that kind of makes him look salty. Because 
Hey, Erin, is this your counter one? Is this your second account, Erin? Clive P says, I know a few of the people who are involved in this, and locally the opinions around this case are much different than what people online are saying. This is Erin 2.0, Erin Hack 2.0. Must be. You're the only local person to this, Erin. What's this Kyle P saying? Don't listen to Kyle P. You only listen to Erin Hack. She is the local. She's the one who knows everything about this trial. She's a nosy one. <laughs> Somebody laughing and joking and being jerks again. I don't condone that. Nobody should do that. It can escalate situations into this, but it usually doesn't rise to the level of creating a situation where you're in fear for your life and have to act in self-defense unless things start to get physical. Speculation as to what people are saying. Speculation as to what other people think. Next question. How did you feel in that moment when they were around you saying those things? Did you think they wanted you to join in their laughter? No. I... Did you want to join in their laughter? No, absolutely not. Was... Where, uh, If this fear scale is going, is it staying at one or is it moving in a particular direction? It's creeping up. Um, yeah, I and Denise. Well, I presume shit by audio. Well, I presume he's saying that local people think he's guilty because most people online think he's not guilty. Do you know what I mean? So, if you go online to all the polls, I would say probably 80 to 90 percent of people on the individual polls have him as not guilty. Um, I'm not saying that in the polls, 90 percent have him guilty. I'm saying. Most polls have him as not guilty. Um, so I presume that locals must think that um, he's guilty. Hi, Chrissy. Oops. I bet he's moved to Texas if he's found not guilty. Yeah, he's better off, isn't he? Uh, Aaron, he's hacking you. Look at me, just give us cases all the time. Gee, I wonder why locals are a certain way. Majority in court TV say guilty. Major well, law and crime majority say not guilty. Um, so that that cancels that one out. Um, that that shows you that different places can have different votes. I've never seen law and crime chat ever go not guilty before. This is probably the first trial I've ever seen that the majority of it, by a significant margin, have been not guilty. I've never seen that. Like. Uh, uh, Court TV have seen it several times, but not nowhere in law and crime I've ever seen it. Um, not in Peter's chat. They think he's... No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying about Twitter and stuff like that. I'm not saying about uh, Peter and stuff like that. I'm, I'm saying about Twitter. Not um, he, The guy who's mentioned social media, not like these, these channels. Hi, wonderful chat peeps. Hello, Chrissy, as you say. Burger, I saw what you did. <laughs> Dave, Erin, he's hacking you. Locals think he is not guilty. Well, I mean, that's hard. I mean, I mean, he's saying the opposite. That You see, this is why we go Erin Hack, though. I said, do not listen to that guy. Always listen to Erin Hack. So you see, we listen to the hackster. That's why we got breaking news. Erin Hackster says local people um, think that he is not guilty. So... Ryan or wherever Ryan P, whatever your name is, f off. We don't care what you have to say. We we listen to the hackster, not you. Hey, I'm back for breaking news. Yeah, second time breaking news. Yes. So yeah, OJ Simpson's died. Yes. We 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 broke it about ten minutes ago. FM, but we do still appreciate you breaking it for a second time, because you know maybe we didn't break it the first time, but allegedly. He died of cancer, um, according to his, according to Brian Entin, who says his family have uh, announced that he died of uh, after battling cancer. Right, let's go back to Tragos, the love machine. Tragos, hello FM from Josie. Right, let's go. Peace. I agree with this. I don't think the fact that he lied mean it's, means it's not self-defense. I think it's very hard for jurors to get over, though. Bryce even says right here, he had a solid case until he lied. I still think self-defense 100%, but I feel his lies were out of shock of what happened, not realizing how bad it ended, potentially. But I think that you could be right in that the lie might flip some jurors or maybe the whole jury. 
I do think that the age of the jurors really helps him. Hold on. Lori says, I can't get over all the lies and concocted stories he told from the moment he saw law enforcement. It makes him even more guilty. It's definitely not a good look. And your own words are always the worst evidence against you. If you look at, oh, hello, Lori's nice. Hello, Lori. Jesus Christ, how's he getting all these women? Hello. Um, right, anyway, forget about that. Right. Um, what was I going to say? Fuck me, Lori. I forgot what I was going to say now. The, yeah, the lies. So, there seems to be a lot of emphasis on the lies here, um, which more than I thought there would be. More than I thought. So, that's had a massive impact maybe on, on this case. This could be his biggest downfall because you're going to have to... His lies, lies could affect people believe in his testimony. So... I didn't think it would play that much of a factor, but apparently it's going to. So, well, obviously we just got a pinch here, but still, there's six thousand people in Peter's chat. So, I mean, that's a that's a big representative, you know. So, I don't know. I, I was quite surprised at that. I knew it would impact on a couple of people, but not like so many people. But... Showing you another set of slides here: twenty three, twenty eight, twenty three, eleven, twenty three, eighty two. Uh, do you remember, uh, what do you remember about that? I remember uh, the young boys were, were yelling, uh, pointing at me, uh, saying things that are not true. Um, did you, were you able to see, like in this next slide, this 2429, 2440, 2401, were you able to see as you stood there what everybody was doing? Were you able to scan and see that? For a brief second, yes. Okay. They were very close. They were really close to me. I could I could see and hear them. How about your fear scale there? Where where is it? Where is it? About two or three. Okay. I see in the one on the right there. You have your hand someplace. Can you tell me what you're doing with your right hand? Yes, I'm uh, uh, reaching for my pocket knife. Why? Because uh, at one point my uh, fear was getting really high. Okay. And I, I... So again, these pictures do depict the escalation for sure, and I think that's the really good argument here for self defense. Now, him reaching for his pocket knife. They're saying it proves you know he's in fear. I thought that was one of the best parts of the state's cross when they point to multiple times much earlier on than this that he starts fidgeting, making sure he has his knife in his pocket. Bryce thinks the state's frame by frame is so unfair. No way anyone had that amount of time to decide. I agree. I agree. When you play it full time, it looks like this guy and even, you know, one of the witnesses said, I think it was Owen, that everybody jumped on him and was beating on him. That's tough. Brian, do you think the jury picks up on the nuanced language? I feel like the attorneys use the language to manipulate the jury without getting called out. Sometimes I think they do pick up on it. Sometimes I think they don't. Sometimes I wouldn't call it manipulation. I would call it appropriate language and the appropriate used words to use. But sometimes I do think they're trying to twist things. Jenny, my issue is that I absolutely do not think Madison was punched. Well, that creates a much different scenario, right? You've got that. These are the decisions the jury has to make. Who was the initial aggressor? What happened? Was there an initial punch? Was there an initial push pull by the girls that started it? Then these guys encircle him. He clearly gets pushed in the water, hit in the back of the head. And a lot of the actual stabbings were when people were coming at him. There's a lot here for a self-defense case. But, as in most situations, his own statements really, really made this more difficult on his lawyers. If he would have said nothing, I think he'd be in better shape. Alyssa, if he was the first aggressor, does that mean everyone else has the right to get involved or just the person being assaulted can defend themselves? So I will tell you, in response, they can only respond in defense of a third party in appropriate force. So if he just pushed her, they can't respond and beat the crap out of him and kill him. But if he punched her in the face, that could potentially be enough for lethal force in a response. So, I mean, these are all the nuanced questions you're figuring out, Alyssa. I can see you working through it that the jury is going to have to work through to make this difficult and very very important decision. I was getting ready to pull it out. Okay. Um, do you remember, other than what you talked about, Madison Conan pulling you, which we saw, do you remember anybody else touching, pushing, grabbing you in any way? Uh, the, the two ladies, yeah. yeah. Showing you here what's 2472, 2478, 2481. Do you remember what's happening in those photos? Yes, yes. Um, this one, the lady on my right side, she uh, she grabbed my, my arm and she was pushing against my uh, my arm. And did that increase your level of comfort or increase your level of fear or something different? 
So it decreased my level, uh, the level of comfort and increased my, uh, my fear. Do you know? I think both sides were freeze framing this to use it for their benefit. But there was definitely a lot of people touching him. And when you're by yourself and there's 13 other people, I can understand why this would be unnerving, even if it's a female and she weighs much less than you. Oh, do you remember at some point, do you take your knife out of your pocket? Yes, I, I do. Do you know when that is in relation to these slides? Do you have a memory exactly of when that is? Not exactly, but when they're pushing and, and poking at me, I remember I pulled it out then. Okay. Do you remember, did you have it out before you were punched or after you were punched? Before I was punched. Okay. Showing he had his knife out before he was punched, which I thought was interesting as well. Because he kind of knows something's coming. Maybe. You Another set of slides here. It looks like you're, do you remember doing something with your left hand? Yeah, at that moment, I really needed my, my people to come over and, and help me. So I was uh, trying to get their attention. Um, one more slide here. Do you, um, what's happening here in the slide? Uh, Madison is pushing on my left shoulder and basically yelling at me right in my face. And then on the next slide, we see something in your hand. Is that right? That's a knife. Um, Why did you take out your knife at that point? I was beginning to be afraid. And what was it about that moment where everybody is that made you so fearful that you took out your knife? I was surrounded. They, uh, they were yelling. They, were, they had just pushed me, um, well, the lady. They, they squeeze my arm. I mean, it seemed like they were not backing away. Um, previously, you turned around. Is that right? Yes. Did you feel comfortable? The tag, this is kind of an interesting opinion. You feel like both sides are shady and lying. Um, so they look. So you looked at the videos and pics, and they don't lie. I agree, and I think that's what the jury will do. I don't agree people are lying, but I definitely think when they figured out what the legal arguments were going to be, they fit and made their testimony fit into what they needed to say and testify to on both sides. I did. I did feel some of that. A uh, nuke. That was very interesting to find out, right? That one of the uh, written house lawyers is also one of his lawyers. Sarah said, "I have complex PTSD and have few memories, but those I have are very specific and detailed. I believe he can remember some moments key to him, and then even more obviously if there's a video, right? It's a lot easier to remember some of those moments." The helpful stranger think something that might really cause issues with the jury is his pulling out and opening a deadly weapon before things became physical in every in any way, which is exactly what he's testifying to here. Well, turning around in this situation? No. Why not? They're too close to, to me. What happened the last time that you turned around? So he's saying, why didn't you turn around and walk away? He said, they're too close to me. Well, last time you turned around and walked away. Nothing good. Um, Judge, this is a place to break. Me as well be. All right, it's 12 noon. Let's break for lunch. Um, they'll be taken downstairs to the assembly room again. I'll put this trial begun the morning on and so i want to start from there again and then move forward from there does that make sense yes when i'd asked you before you talked about how you felt but since that time you've told the jury that you had this fear scale okay mm -hmm. so at, i want to ask you about at this time what we see here but you previously described the scene right mm -hmm. how were you feeling on the fear scale about the six seven okay and at some point i think you told them before but just so we can put it into the context here did you do something in response to something that was done to you when you're standing there in this moment? Yes, uh, after uh, um, I was pushed, and, and both sides, I would say, you know, squeezed, I, um, I was afraid, so I pulled out my knife. Okay, did you do something with your left hand at some point? Yes, I did. What'd you do with your left hand? I pushed her away, I when pushed you Madison. You pushed away. Madison away. When you, was the purpose in that to have contact with her and to get her back up? Yes. Did you have a purpose to cause her pain? No. Were you trying to hurt her? No. What were you trying to do? I was trying to push her away from my space. She was right in my space, in my face. Could you? Why didn't you just back up? I couldn't back up at that moment. Okay. When you say you couldn't back up, did why not? Because you felt uncomfortable, or objection, we, objection leading. because I would have wait, wait, wait. Just objection sustained on leading. Next question. Was and he does lead a lot. Defense attorneys lead a lot because most, the vast majority of their witnesses, they're cross examining, so they're allowed to lead, um, and they do object to it a lot. They confirm it, but the defense attorney finds a way to say the answer out loud so that. The defendant can repeat it back to him, a very common strategy um, and uh, way that lawyers do this. And you'll hear that throughout this. Were you uncomfortable or was there a wall behind you or was there some other reason? Why did you feel like you couldn't back up? I didn't feel, uh, feel uh, safe turning my back on, on those people. Okay. How about just taking a step backwards? Well, I was standing my ground. I didn't move towards anybody. Okay. They were coming at me. When, they, when you <laughs> raised your left hand and you did that, do you recall when you pushed her away having contact with her? I may have, yes. Okay. Do you remember in particular where, if at all, you touched her? No. 
Would it surprise you if you touched her? No. Was that in fact your purpose in pushing her away? Absolutely. Okay. She was in my space. I want to move forward here. At, and you can turn the slide off, I guess. At, after you did that, right? Did you, did something happen to you? Yeah. Did people do something to you? Yeah. What uh, was done to you? Yeah, almost right away I got uh, punched. Okay. And, and what? where did you get punched? On my face, on my side of the head. Now, you've had a chance to watch this video, correct? Yes. Have you had a chance to see these 4,800 slides? Yes. Prior to seeing that, did you remember everything? No. Have the video or the slides helped you to refresh your memory in some way? A lot. Have and again, I think that's a good set of answers and sounds really good. And I think, again, the direct went pretty good. Cross is tough. And Ted asked, Peter, would you put him on the stand if you were his lawyer? Watching the cross, I might have second thoughts. Originally, I probably would have. He's got to explain himself, what he thinks, what he feels about his physical state and mental state at the time. I think all of that was really important. Um, so I, I, I'm torn on it. I think I would put him on the stand, even though I think Cross may have sunk the case for him. Um, but with no testimony and all they hear is that interview of pure lies, I think you're kind of already stuck with that in this case. Alex, I still think not guilty, but he shouldn't have testified. Do you think it was his choice or did the lawyer ask him? I think it was his choice. Usually the lawyers will give their opinion, but ultimately it's the client's choice. Jen, he should have walked away. How would he know they would attack him? So it's justified if they attack him because he didn't move, but not okay that he responded. A good discussion if we're on the jury together. It's it's always a very interesting um, way that people look at this differently. And again, some people see it as an easy thing to walk away. Some people think impossible they're going to attack him. Now it depends. Did any of the boys actually attack him or do anything to him before the altercation with Madison? The helpful stranger pushed hard enough to knock her glasses off. Again, there were some people in the chat that say, I don't think she even ever got hit. So I think that would be something we have to, it sounds like in this case it's tough because so many people's memories faded. Nobody was exactly in line with the video. Again, it's hard. It's a traumatic event. Nobody has a perfect recollection of anything. And when you have a video, it's easy to call somebody a liar or pick apart something they said that wasn't true. Very, very difficult. Miraculous Hufflepuff. Was it said if the boys actually had the phone? I think the answer to that was no, they never found the phone. Peggy, I thought the video showed him running towards the boys as if to confront them. Also, if I saw a group of teens yelling at me coming closer, I would have been out of there. I agree with you there, but I think you are, are basically seeing it the same way as the prosecutor because I think that's how they kind of early on in cross, they get to the fact that they think he was darting towards the boys, not away from them like he should have. Have you remembered everything because you've seen that? Not everything, no. Okay. Do you remember something different than what you see in the video? No. You don't remember any of the things different that you see in the video? Like you talked about the goggles. Direction leading. He's like, you sure? Let me tell you, you do remember things differently. So then he figures it out and picks up his answers. But the, the prosecutor's right there to object to leading. Prosecutor objected appropriately, I think, throughout. The defense objects a lot in cross. If you're trying to reorient the witness to a place where examination can continue. Are there some times when your memory is different from what the video is? Yes, of course. Okay. Now, this series that I want to show you is about things that were done to you, okay? Yes. Do you have a specific memory about everything that was done to you? No. Do you have a specific memory about everything that you did in response to what was done to you? No. Do you have a memory about how you felt in those moments? I would say yes, I do. Um, do you have a memory of what you believed in those moments based upon those feelings? Of course. So I want to show you the, the slide here. And this is slide 2661, 2662, and 2681. That's fine. Do you remember how you felt when you fell back into the water? I was, uh, number one, I was stunned. Uh, that's why I, I, I fell backwards. I was very scared, hey, of course. On this fear scale that you talked about before, where are you on that scale from zero to 10? Right at the top, 10. Have you ever been at that 10 before in your life? Never been in a situation like this or a fight in my life. Have you ever been at a 10? Never. Um, when you did that, as we see on the right, what happened to your head? Oh, um, well, I uh, fell in the water. Obviously, that's a river, and uh, I hit my head on, uh, on river rock, and uh, my whole body went under. Well, okay. my head went underwater. When you say your head went under, is that what it felt like? Yes. Did you feel water come over your face? Over Objection. my entire body. Yes. That's objection. Bleeding. Where did you feel? So I, I see a lot of people asking for a poll. We will do a poll after direct and see where
see where you guys are leaning, guilty, not guilty, or hung, or undecided. And then we'll do another poll after cross to see if your opinion has changed. And again, tons. Not sure what happened there. What is that? One hour. And uh, my whole body went under as well. Okay. My head went underwater. When you say your head went under, is that what it felt like? Yes. Did you, did you feel water come over your face? Over my entire body. What's the objection? Reading. Where did you feel? So I, I see a lot of people asking for a poll. We will do a poll after direct and see where you guys are leaning, guilty, not guilty, or hung, or undecided. And then we'll do another poll after cross to see if your opinion has changed. And again, tons of new members. Welcome, Alyssa, and everybody else that has joined today. And thank you to everybody gifting memberships as well. Love adding new people to the membership crew. It's always always a good time in there. Feel the water on your body. Over my face, my my mouth. I felt like I was submerged in water. At the moment. Did you try to get up? Yes. Why did you want to get up? Why didn't you just lay down there peacefully in the water? No, I wouldn't want to do that. I wanted to get up out of the water. At that moment, when you're down in the water, had anybody like AJ Martin come up to you and said, "Just lay there and rest"? Uh, somebody came from behind. Yes, I found out later who he was and pushed me down and to keep me in the water. Before that, when you tried to get up, do you remember feeling anything before that? Did you? You told them, yeah, yeah. did you feel anything to any part of your head? Yes, of what did you feel? The, the punch in the, in the head. Showing you the next slides. Is that 2701, 2705, 2706? What's happening to you there? I, I'm getting hit on, on the head. How many times at that point is what your memory of watching the video and your memory of experiencing this, have you been hit in the head now, but either by people or by the ground or by the water? Four times at least. Okay. At this point in time, where's your fear scale? The 10. When this happened to you, did you immediately get up or did you fall back in the water or did something else happen? I tried getting up, but I couldn't. Did you I do buy that his fear scares scale is pretty high at this point? Right. And now is when the lethal response starts happening. The question is, did he get himself into this situation? That's what the jury's gonna have to determine. And the defense is really trying to set up that all of this exploded and there was nothing else he could do except to defend himself because it was his life or theirs. At some point, did you feel something on your backside? There was somebody pushing me down. And when you felt that on your backside, did you feel anything else anywhere else? I got hit in the face in the front of my head. And is that um, exhibit here 2147? Do you see that hand through the underarm there? Yes. Do you remember getting hit in the head there? Yes. Was that a gentle hit? No. When you're getting hit in the head here again, where are you at on the fear scale at that point? Again. Have you been able to get up out of the water? No. How many people? Totally reasonable. Now, this is where it starts. Try this is where the video started. Started. I think it's 100% an easy self defense. Question is, what do you believe about the Madison punch? And Culper asked, did Madison testify she was punched? I think she testified off camera. I didn't see it if she testified in front of camera. I don't think she did. But my guess is she said yes, um, as most of the victims did. Uh, ben, were you surprised the defense attorney is not bringing up the language culture differences more? I think that explains some of his odd behavior. I, You know, it's always interesting when defense attorneys don't do something that seems obvious or seems like something you would do. My guess is they thought about it and just, it was an intentional decision not to. I don't know why. Maybe the client didn't want to. Maybe they felt like it didn't come across the way that they thought it would. But it is always interesting to think about things like that. Gabby said, inclined to believe the punch did happen because of the contemporaneous evidence. Teens on video shouting, never hit a woman. And Maddie on body cam saying it too. And again, that's why the video is always the most important. Uh, for the jurors, how much impact does seeing the victim scars hold, in your opinion? A lot. A lot. I think the trauma and the sadness and the how horrible the outcome of this was is really going to weigh a lot on them. Kate, Peter, can the jury ask to see the whole video from beginning to end? So not during the trial, but when they're deliberating, it's a piece of evidence. They can watch the whole thing back there as many times. They can slow it down, rewind it, pause it as many times as they want to. They're in control. Okay. Melissa said, it's shocking to me that there was no remorse. I think if the average person unintentionally killed a 17-year-old, even under duress, they would feel some remorse that things got so out of hand. 100% agree. What I will say is, including what we watched in the Crumbly's sentencing today, it's hard for people not to revolve their world around themselves. And they think something's happening to them, and they're wrongfully charged, and this is an, an injustice, and you know they don't care about anything else. And sometimes that consumes them. 
uh, Timberwolf. I watched the video from the time he left the tube down the river till the time it's Madison was hit. It was close to 70 seconds, plenty of time to walk away, even when people tell him to do so. People, do you know how many people are attacking you? At the time, I didn't know, but I, I knew there were more than I could handle. Did it feel like it was, how many did people did it feel like? Like 10. Okay. You've seen the video and you responded at some point. Is that right? Yes. And you used your knife in response. Yes. Why do you use your knife? I feared for my life. Did you think you could get out of there without using your knife? I couldn't even get up. You're pushing me down. No, so the answer is no. I mean, that's a pretty scary picture, right? Like, I don't care the age or who or male or female, whoever's doing this to me that I don't know and was just yelling at me and stuff. I'm in fear for my life. Fear for my life. So whether he was so in fear for his life and acting in self-defense at this point, I don't think is a big question. And the question really is, did he start all of this? Was he the initial aggressor? And did he keep it going or escalate it? That's the real question here, in my opinion. In that time, when you're down on the ground, did you think there was a way for you to escape? No. Did you feel like you could just crawl away or run away or walk away or do anything else to escape? Not in that position. The next day after this, July 31st, were you in the... Uh, did you feel, how did your body feel the next day? I hurt everywhere. My head hurt, my throat hurt. And that's tough because that's not what he told the officer or even the nurse. He's going to overly exaggerate. It. And again, if you want to say you're old and you want to say you're decrepit and you want to say you were scared, fine. You have the bypass surgery, you know, two years prior, fine. But to say stuff like this, when you had the opportunity to claim it and you didn't, again, goes back to... What Debbie's talking about, he seems to have selective memory. That makes me question his honesty. Will the jury feel the same way? I think they're definitely going to scrutinize the testimony. We've heard a lot of juror interviews post-trial, and if the defendant if testifies, the defendant it's always the most important thing. And most of the cases we've watched together, it hasn't gone well. Rittenhouse is one of the exceptions that it did go well for him, and he ends up with a not guilty. But a lot of these defendants end up sinking themselves when they testify. Uh, obviously, my back hurt. I hurt everywhere. You said your throat hurt. Is that something you remembered that day before when you were speaking with Brandy Hart? Yes. Okay. Yes. Did you mention it to Brandy Hart? I don't remember. Okay. So it's something you remembered but didn't mention. Again, that just doesn't like make a lot of sense to me like Debbie is saying here in the comment. Have, did, did you see anything when you felt the pain about your throat? Did you see anything that refreshed your memory about what caused the pause? Shit. I, I'm sorry. It's probably an echo here. I didn't realize... I had muted myself. The only thing I would say back about this is I think people are underestimating the lingo here. I think Mew doesn't actually know what he's answering half the time. Not half the time. This proportion of time, I don't actually think he knows exactly what he's saying. Um, I think he gets a little bit confused. So I give, give him a little bit of leeway on some of these questions. Um, it seems that Peter's giving him zero leeway. Was that pain to your throat? After watching the video, yes. Okay. What happened? I got hit in the, in the throat. Do you remember that now? Yes. If I can. Showing you the slides, 2993, 2994, and 2997. Is that you? Yes. What's happening to you there? Somebody is going for my throat, squeezing my throat. Do you remember how that felt? I felt pain. I couldn't breathe. I'm scared, afraid. I'm showing you the next set of slides here, 2998, 99, and 3000. What did you think was going to happen to you in that moment? The whole time I, I, I felt like I was going to die. So he uh, basically appeared for my life. And in response to that, here's slide 3000. Did you do something in response to that? I reached out and, uh, and stabbed him. When you used your knife. Again, that looks like a picture of self-defense, right? I mean, that looks like a picture of self-defense. Correct me if I'm wrong. You guys tell me. If we're just looking at that picture with no context, there is still a lot here for the defense to work with. But there's a lot of other context that the jury has to consider. Some questions about this that I think are interesting. Mara said, no one saw Mew holding the knife, but if they had, would it change anything? Could they respond and try to disarm him or fight him because he held a knife? Again, they were saying they were in fear. Maybe they were responding. 
Who was the aggressor? If they thought he was coming after them with a knife, absolutely they could respond with deadly force. Michelle said, what if he initially took out the knife to warn? He didn't say that, right? And Paula asked, like he is hiding the knife. Why not show it to deter the kids? So all self self-defense experts, cops, combat people, which I am not one or an expert on, say that that's the wrong thing to do, especially in a group of 10 or 12 people, because now you're really setting it up that if you're trying to warn them with the knife, they could easily take the knife and turn it on you like other people have already asked about. Again, this is open-ended. You can ask it any way you want. Did you, were you trying to kill somebody? Absolutely not. Um, what were you trying to do? I was just trying to defend myself. After this was, again, we've seen the video, you talked to Investigator Hart. So I want to ask you a little bit about that for a moment. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to get into your very inconsistent statement and see how he's going to answer that. So Karen, yes, both sides were drinking. Confirmed, though, that the victim's group was drinking a lot more. And I think they admitted also smoked marijuana, at least some of them. Shay said, I mean, it's difficult to hear the defendant call the victims by their first names. He's been asked to multiple times. So I don't know if that makes it any better or worse, but it's part of the procedure here that they're that they're going with. Boxed RN. He clearly has training with that weapon. Five torso wounds, well-placed and thought out. How can he testify that they were drunk, young, and you weren't, and you didn't just leave? It's a good point, right? Not being drunk, being sober-minded, more likely you'd make the right decision and leave, but not the case here. Do you independently, well, let me say, you've watched the video here in court, correct? Yes. And you watched the video prior to that. We watched it together, right? Yes. Does watching that video refresh your memory? Do you have an independent memory of that conversation with Investigator Hart? No. Do you remember what it is you said other than seeing things on the video? Other than uh, I lied about the knife. That's what I remember, you know, afterward. Yeah, I lied about the knife. Do you remember actually saying the thing he remembers is that he lied about the knife? That in that moment, or you just remember seeing that and that's what you remember seeing? I remember seeing it in the video. Okay. Do you remember how you were feeling during that time at all? Do you have any memory about that? Not much. Just one other thing out of the timeline here. Since that time, have you, we've heard testimony, you have a twin brother. Yes. Is he here in the courtroom? Yes. Objection relevance, Your Honor. You may continue. During this time, have you had conversations with your twin brother? Yes. Do you consider there to be anybody that you're really, maybe your wife, anybody you're closer to than your twin brother? No. The You and your twin brother, when you speak, what language do you speak in? Romanian. Why do you speak in Romanian with your twin brother? Here they hit some of the cultural language differences, but again, not a ton like somebody else asked. Um, Paul printed art is just me or does his lawyer keep giving him the answers and the questions? The 16, 17 year old was why they called them kids. That's all. Yeah, definitely a lot of leading questions here. No doubt about that. It's the easiest way to find words to describe what we're thinking. Okay. Is that where you grew up? So again, he brings it up in the context of the interview with the cop that was very inconsistent to what he talks about today and with the video. That's the first language. Um, are there times when you've spoke with your brother that you talk about this? What happened to you on the river? Yes. Is your memory about what you did or what was done to you, is it any better when you talk to your brother than it is when you talk about other times? No. Are you always getting it right? No. How about your feelings? Your memory about your feelings? Mm -hmm. Do you get those right? Yes, but almost all the time. I, the feeling is imprinted in my, my, my heart, my soul, my mind. Let me, just for a moment, I'll bring us back to the river on July 30th, okay? Mm -hmm. At some, I think you'd said on the video and maybe you testified that people attacked you. Is that right? Correct. At some point, did people stop attacking you? No. At some point, did people stop attacking you? Yes. Okay. It's like, let me ask that again because I didn't get the answer that I wanted. Yeah. When people stopped attacking you, what did you do? I walked away. Okay. Why didn't you stay? Oh, God. Uh, I, I walked away towards my group where it was safe. I was afraid of the people. I just had contact with When you're walking away, where, you've talked about this fear scale. Where are you on the fear scale? Does it just go down right to zero? Does it stay at 10? Does something else happen? No, as soon as I saw the, the people I trusted, my fear uh, level started creeping down. You say creeping down. When you're walking back and you give us a, a where are you on that scale? Exactly the inverse of when you see all these people not with your group coming, your fear scale creeps up. And they, they set this up throughout the trial where the victims all got you know, more comfortable and their fear went down when they realized they had a big group with them and he was just by himself. So a good job of setting something up throughout the trial by the defense. I was getting closer to my group. The fear factor is going lower and lower. But when you first start walking back, what's the number? About eight. When you get back to the tubes, what's the number level? About four or okay. five. I think we didn't talk about it. We talked a little bit about your body response during this mm -hmm. brief time. 
when you start walking back, how's your body responding to you? I had cramps. I uh, felt like I lost. I, I had diarrhea, so I felt like I lost my ball. Is that which I did? Was that when you were walking back, or was that when you were in that ten seconds <laughs> I mean, of things happening traumatic, to you? Right. I mean, I don't know that that can be confirmed, but pretty traumatic if that did happen to him. And I, I bet it was traumatic for him. I don't think anybody's going to say this wasn't a traumatic event. I understand saying not a lot of emotion being shown and things like that. Um, but I mean, it had to be, he had to be in shock after that. You and you responding. I was when, when the, the action was going on in the 10 second frame. You got diarrhea. Yes. Um, when you were walking back, yeah. uh, what else is your body? What are you feeling with your body? Well, heartbeat is getting, uh, when I'm walking back, the heartbeat was very, very high. Now it's going down a little bit, breathing, you know, that's what I remember. I remember I, I was super, super stressed. How about your head? As you're going back, is your head clear? Is your head in a different state? How can you describe like what's going on in your head? My head was in a fog. It was like thick fog. I, I couldn't think. I couldn't realize what 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 I've been through. Because he doesn't tell any of his friends, and he gives a completely different story a couple hours later. So they're setting up why that happened, so they can connect these dots in closing arguments tomorrow. Summer Golden said, "I'm with you on Judge Doro. She's wonderful. What are your thoughts on this case? Why didn't he just walk away when he realized he was in the situation with the drunk teens? Why is that?" So many people. Once the altercation started, I got to be honest, as horrible as this may sound, I understand why he's just kind of swinging everywhere, trying to hurt these people and get them away from him because if they're on top of him, punching him, hitting him, pushing him in the water, I get it. But it's only self-defense if he did not initiate, aggravate, start the fight, escalate. That's the only way it's actually self-defense. So I understand somewhat his actions once the fight started. But how it started is really the question for the jury. Mrs. Kevin said, Peter, my dad, a pastor, testified as a character witness in an SD case. It's a wild story. But his friend took the stand and found, found not guilty. Yeah, a lot of them ended not guilty with this, but I shouldn't say a lot. It's definitely the minority of cases that ended not guilty to start with. And it's a minority of cases the defendant testifies. And then it's a minority of cases when the defendant testifies that they end up in not guilty. But it does happen, absolutely. We've had it happen plenty of times for us as well. Tom, Peter, in my opinion, he needed to de-escalate and walk away. I agree. I wish that's what happened, obviously, right? And I think people that are saying that's impossible are entrenched a little bit too much in the self-defense side, which, again, is where I've been kind of throughout this trial. Um, he needed to take the stand. Romanians in general are not aggressive, but if provoked, I understand. By the way, great to see all these new members. Yes, thank you, Tom. Were you trying to make sense of it? I was trying, but there was no sense to be made. I was completely confused and in a fog. And when you walked away, you had the knife in your hand. Is that right? Yep. When you got to your group, did you still have the knife? No. What happened to the to the knife? Uh, I on the way back, I tossed it on the on the bank. And you just made with your right hand kind of an underhand motion yep. with your right hand from you know at your side, raising up to maybe level with you. Is that fair representation of what you were describing? Correct. Why'd you toss the knife? I don't know. I was afraid. I felt like I had to throw it away. What were you afraid of at that point? I was overwhelmed with, with just fear, you know, residual feel, fear. And I didn't want to. And he's got to explain why'd you walk away, not tell the cops, not tell anybody. That's the toughest stuff in this case for the defense. Do you have anything to do with that? Okay. We've heard testimony that eventually you get back to the tubes. Does that happen? Yeah. Do you, where's your memory about that? Right now, as you sit here, because we don't have a video about that, we don't have photos of that. Is there, what's your memory like about that? It's barely remember anything. Do you remember talking to people? I remember people trying to talk to me, but I don't know. I don't remember what I said. Okay. You've heard some testimony about things that you might have said. Are you denying you said any of those things? No. Do you know what you said? After watching the video, yes. The video isn't of, I'm confused. Would you, the tubes, there's no video of you at the tubes. When you say, oh, uh, after. Good morning, Bifrance. Hello, how are you? We're just watching this from yesterday, Peter Trigos, just in case you're wondering. But welcome, Bifrance. Well, Were you talking about the, Brandy Hart's statement? Yes, yes. Okay. About what you said to the people at the tubes. Do you have any memory of no, that? No. Okay. When you're sitting there at the tubes, how are you feeling in your head? You talk about this fog, right? If you could put that on a scale, where is that? It's different. My, my head was in a thick cloud. I couldn't understand what, what just happened. Still trying to process everything. I was overwhelmed. Did you think at any point you were just casual about what had happened? No. 
Did this feel casual to you in any way? No. At some point, uh, you saw the video here. You had contact with the police, is that right? Yes. Um, you uh, had sat in the back of a squad car of the Sheriff Knutson, is that right? Yes. Do you remember much of anything about that? No. Do you remember, you've seen some of the videos today. Can you tell us what do you remember? Nothing. Okay. Nothing at all? How about a feeling? Do you remember a feeling at all? Yeah, I was very, still very afraid. Okay. When you say very afraid, what were you afraid of at that point? Well, I've just seen, I've been through a horror situation, but uh, in their present, I wasn't that afraid, but I was stunned. I don't remember much about it. Do you remember watching the video here in court when the police were talking about a guy with a bat? Oh, yeah. Do you remember anything about that? Uh, a little bit. Do you remember how, you, how that made you feel? Oh, yeah. I, I, I felt very afraid of him. Very afraid. We watched the video of you with um, Sheriff Knutson. That was about 23 seconds long. Do you remember that? Yeah. Have you watched a longer portion of that video with your attorneys? Arrested and told. But I don't remember that. Okay. That's right. When, you, when you're talking with either, at some point you go and you meet with Investigator Hart. Is that right? Yeah. When they were talking about homicides and injuries. Thanks, AJ. I know it's a bit, quiet. It's a bit boring for the watch, but thanks for joining us, AJ. More than welcome to come back anytime on any trial, AJ. Thank you. Can you tell me what you were, what's your mindset? Did that make sense to you? Did you understand that? No. I, I, I couldn't make any sense of it, anything that she was telling me. It just couldn't make sense of it. Okay. Plus, I don't remember the, the, the meeting with her. Okay. Right now, as you sit here, you're like, I don't remember that. Right. The feelings. Now, some of the times that you talk with Randy Hart, you talk about what you saw happening or heard happening or what you did. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Did you get all of that right? No. Your feelings. When you're talking about your feelings about and how you believed and your fear. Yeah. I, I, I feared for my life. That's one thing I can't deny. I, I, that's embedded in my head forever. I feared for my life. I know that. I have nightmares. You, you've talked to, or yeah. Tell us about those nightmares. I have them every night. What, what happens in those nightmares? These nightmares are irrelevant. Back in Adam, maybe, but not Okay. Well, nightmares are irrelevant. Um, and Culper said, why are lawyers allowed to use the term in shock? Shock refers to a psychological condition, or sorry, a physiological condition, which means a drop in blood pressure. I think they're more using just the lay term in shock. Jurors understand what it means. Um, it's not unusual for that to be allowed. Jenna, this made me laugh. I'm glad you're here, though. Glad you're here. Can I approach? Yes. yes. <laughs> We're going to have a little argument at sidebar. Agreed? Correct. And when you have those nightmares, your body responds. Yes. yes. Approach again. You used the knife. Did you believe you were under attack? Yes. Why? Because they, at that point, they've, they've already been pushing and tugging. And when you used the knife, had they done anything more than pushing or tugging? Did you they punch me? They, they, they pushed me down. They, they, they threw me in the water. I hit my head. Yes. So when you decided to use your knife. Were you using it to? Prevent an attack or stop the attack that was happening? To defend myself. Um, did you believe you needed to use that knife? Absolutely. In that moment in time, again, as you've described it, they pushed you down into the water and you've been punched. That's the moment of time I want to ask you about, okay? Yeah. In that moment of time when you were down in the water, did you believe you could escape? No. What do you believe would have happened to you had you not used your knife? I would have died. I believe I would have been killed that day. Why do you? that specific time. Why do you use your knife? To defend myself. Those are the only questions I have, Judge. All right. That's the end of direct. Now we're going to get cross queued up here, but we're going to do a couple things. John, first off, <clears throat> throw up our poll after direct. Where is your lean? If you had to vote right now, guilty, not guilty, hung jury, or unsure. I'm going to hit a few questions before we get to cross. I think this is the best defense attorney we've had on your channel. How long do you think the jury is going to take? I would guess Friday, that would just be my shot in the dark. Closing arguments are tomorrow, Wednesday. I think we have a verdict on Friday. I don't know. I think it's possible on Thursday. I'd be really shocked if it was Wednesday. T, at end of day discussion regarding jury instructions, the state said they intend to suggest an additional alternate theory in closing that Mew hit Madison on purpose to provoke her. Defense attorney and judge both had a WTF reaction, and I think that goes perfectly with Netwoman's comment. He had a hero complex. He had no fear approaching the group of loud, young, intoxicated people. Why did he leave to go look for the lost phone then? The moment he was told he wasn't wanted there, he should have left. And there's a lot more in this cross-examination about him, when he touched his knife, why he touched his knife, things like that. Pesky Pirouette. 
Peter, did he require any medical attention? Virtually none. Lori. Hi, AJ. Well, let's see our poll. How's our poll coming? 63% of you think that the verdict could be today. And then some of you think it's going to be Friday afternoon. Hmm. Peter, I think he showed consciousness of guilt in leaving the scene and lying. Can that consciousness be used to show he didn't act in self-defense? The state, I think, is going to argue that that's exactly even he didn't think he acted in self-defense. And we're going to hear a little bit of that on cross as well. Alyssa, why did the defense harp on a group trying to humiliate you with words? Wouldn't intimidate be a better description? I think so. Yeah, I mean, humiliate him just to make the victims look bad, um, try to get the jury not to like them, try to make them understand. But I think it's fodder for the state to use in cross to say exactly what Netwoman kind of said. You weren't going to let this happen. You have a hero complex. Debbie J, I'm having so much time trouble believing him. He tubed down the river like nothing happened. His inconsistent statement and his actions afterwards, again, while they don't necessarily mean he didn't act in self-defense, because what happened during that altercation is really what should decide this case. But I think your hang up is where a lot of jurors are also going to get hung up. All right. Cross examination. Here we go. Yeah, I had a recognize that. Yes. That's a group photo of you, you folks from the beginning of the room. Yep. After holding a beer. Correct. Looks like everybody in your group has some sort of alcohol beverage. Looks like it. You see numerous people in your group with these phone cases around their necks. Yeah. And as you're going down the river, you saw lots of people with phone cases around their necks, right? Mm -hmm. All day long. Yeah. In fact, um, River's Edge sells or rents out those phone cases, right? I don't know that. The people in your group rent or buy phone cases from the two rental? No, no idea. Right. <clears throat> Testified that you were told to bring the knife before you left your home, right? Correct. And the reason for bringing your knife on the river was to cut strings or ropes for the tubes, right? Correct. And that was that was the reason you brought it. Correct. In fact, you told the police that after your tubes were tied together, you thought you put your knife back in the car, right? Correct. But in fact, it was in your pocket. Yes. It was in your pocket the whole day. No. All right. Well, we're gonna get to that. Once the tubes are tied together with the rope, and you said that you thought you put it back in your car, you don't have a reason to have the knife anymore, right? It accomplished its purpose, right? I didn't know that at the time. Right. Did you tell the cops, that the police, you didn't think you were going to need it, and that's why you thought you put it in the car? And they have. All right. Uh, were you present when uh, Steve Kaufman, who owns River's Edge, testified first day of trial? Yes. And you were going to say that they, they sell pre-cut cords for a dollar, right? Right. All right. And then you see in the picture, uh, when you got on the river, you were wearing that long sleeve panel shirt, right? Mm -hmm. Hat and sunglasses? Correct. All right. Ariel's phone was in one of those, those cases, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. All right, and is it your understanding that those cases are float cases? That's what I was told. All right, and you told, in fact, you told Lieutenant Hart that it was a float case, right? Correct. Once the phone disappeared, there was conversation amongst the folks in your group about whether it was even worth it to go look for it, right? That's what I learned. And in fact, you were told that they didn't care about the lost phone because they had insurance to cover it, right? That's what I learned here, but I don't remember that as a conversation. Nobody asked you to go look for the phone, right? Correct. You chose to do that on your own. I volunteered. And in fact, members of your group were a little annoyed that you were stopping again so so quickly after having been at the hideaway where you'd stopped for lunch. Speculation. Did you hear anybody in your group say, why are we stopping again? I didn't stop the group. The group stopped when you decided to go off on your own to look for this phone, right? Speculation. Right? They were already stopped. I got off the tube to look for the, so I didn't stop them. In any event, you're the one who insisted on looking for it. Nobody asked you to do that, right? And when you left to go look for the phone, you had your goggles and your snorkel, right? You knew that the phone was in a float bag, at least that's what you told police afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. But yes? Yes. So the bag, the phone, and the float bag would have been floating, right? Supposedly, yeah. All right, and so you wouldn't need a snorkeling goggles to find a... Again, this a little nitpicky of a start. I almost skipped this, but it's like, why do you need goggles to look for something that should be floating? That makes sense, the snorkel thing, all of that. I mean, th this is, you know, a little bit of a nitpicky, probably not what I would have started with, but I guess it makes sense. Kim R., I think this is a really important sentiment. I've been feeling this and thinking about this a lot during this trial, so I appreciate you saying this. Okay, there's more movement in court again. I'm going to switch over to it because I've seen quite a few people now.
Again, it might be nothing, but... I'm sure you'll be able to see yourselves. I'm looking up to see. So yeah, there's movement. There's a lot of people actually, so. Some people saying verdict is in, but I don't know. Yeah, this has. I mean, I don't know. Some people say verdict's in, but I've not seen anyone that is um, worth listening to say it yet, but I'll keep an eye out on. Is it verdicts? Is it? Do you know that, Mike? Or are you just saying that as a dig the piss? Like, because uh, um, I'm just gonna go on Twitter to see. Uh, nothing's been announced yet on Twitter, but ah, fine. No, no, because some people are saying the verdict's in, but um, that's why I thought you might have seen. It's probably a question, but. Still, something's happening, so I'll leave it on here now because there's definitely something happening. We can see by all the heads and stuff like that. But Court TV and Law and Crime have not said anything, so... Um... Hang on, let's go to some of these... No, nothing on Twitter or anything, but something's happening anyway. It's either going to be a question or a verdict, so... So law and crime say no updates yet. They're not sure what's going on. That's law and crime saying that. Will our resident nosy bitch Erin Hack know? Let 
Wendy H back in the chat. I got a few moments before I can uh, can only listen again. Number one, we most often lie to protect ourselves. Absolutely, for him, I only proves more to me he was in he was scared in danger, etc. I don't disagree with you, Wendy. I I just I'm surprised how many people are using him um, lying as 100 percent guilty. That, that's why I you know I'm. Um, I, I knew some would, but I didn't expect everyone to be like that. Not everybody, but a lot of people to be like that. Um, Dave Hamburger, he's gone to somewhere else. But um, Aaron Hack is here. Have you heard Long Crime just announced that they're not sure what's going on? I don't think we his line has the guilty argument. No, oh, that was a close up and a half. Well, hopefully, some people will see that we we're now live and join us. I mean, oh wow! Thank you, thank you, mighty me. Wow, so it looks like the verdict's back. Let me go into that. Look at Mighty, Mighty Me. Mighty Me, what a lad. I'll go into um, the one now then. Or they like Fox Nine. So this what's this a sign of then? Fully pack already. I know. I know, Murph. Everybody is like, whoa. But apparently Fox Nine Minneapolis. Well their blog says that's fine, that's good enough. I mean, they're the ones mainly doing it, mate. So they are actually the number one. Wow. Okay. Oof. Let me see she as well then. Giga based. I would Well, not guilty is more likely if they are already done, but who knows? I just turned the Fox Nine channel. No, it's not there. Uh, Mighty Saw on the blog. It's on their blog. It's on the blog. It's not on the new site. Love to dance singing. Much really, I want it that way. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy, thank you for the compliments. <laughs> not everyone likes my singing. But for you, Wendy, always, always. Um, let's, let's see the walk again. Let's do the time walk again. Number three, Trey Ghost, I'd hit that. <laughs> Taco. 
Oh, look, I wasn't swearing then. Put your hands on your hips. Da, 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 da. Let's do the time warp again. Let's do the time warp again. Wendy H. Beaver, Beaver, Beaver. Um, Robin Wilson. Hey, Robin. No time warping in the aisles. No worries, Wendy. Catch it a bit, my darling. Right. It's, I'm not sure if Mighty Me's trolling us here now. I don't know, but uh, this is the third that I would spend we've had about OJ Simpson. Breaking news, OJ Simpson. <laughs> yeah. Free Zachary Anderson. We won't show it. Spelled wrong, but we you know it. Free Zachary Anderson, absolutely. Put your hands on your hips. I mean, well, we'll see. I mean, Kathy Runson has said, movement happening in Nikolai Trad. No confirmation of what exactly is happening, but reports are that attorneys and multiple deputies are in the courtroom per Paul Bloom, Fox 9. The public media have not been let in yet. So let's follow Paul Bloom. Apple River stabbing trial. A courthouse crew was reporting significant activity in and around the courtroom right now with attorneys heading into Mew's courtroom. We are live with the developments just as, as soon as they happen. So that's been confirmed. Significant movements. Shit, didn't he hear it. No, oh, yeah, that's no, fine. It, it, no, I only say it because a uh, few people have come in now and breaking news, breaking news, and then you came in, breaking, you know, Juice is loose in hell now. Yes, yes. Is it, I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to disrespect. This it is what it is. Oh, Fox 9 TV channel says we're waiting for it. So we are waiting for it, people. We are waiting. Oh, well, this is close. This is really, really, as in quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. motherfucker! Bastard! Fuck! Fuck. Apparently so, yes. Apparently verdict. Now it's, it says still deliberating, awaiting verdict. Well, there's significant movement in the courthouse. So, um, it, I mean, it could be a question, but I think it's more likely to be a um, thing, a uh, verdict. It's on the, apparently, allegedly, might be seen it on a blog saying this verdict is that, 10.45 central, no, 10.45 central, which is 11, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is now, basically. No. Oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, nothing on Google about it. So-called uh, Twitter, they are saying that they think it might be a verdict, but just awaiting confirmation. The media have not allowed but in yet, so they can't confirm it yet. Can't re-kick off tomorrow. Well, I was going to say, 
Robin, if if um if there's no verdict today, then uh, I would have been like um stuffed to I can't do both. My laptop's about to crash. Sheet verdict. Hey Paige. Fox Line just said, We're we're ahead of the game. Mighty meets ahead of the game here. I think, hey, if you want to see when verdicts happen, come to this stream. Look at us. I knew something's happening. Mighty me from the clouds goes bang. It's in, and now look at us. They are reporting outside the court. Does that uh, is all they are saying? Deliberations continue, awaiting verdict. I think it's been announced now. Um, I think multiple sources now have announced it. Hey, Delan. Hey, Paige. Erin, you should go to the courthouse. Yeah, get in that small bus, Erin. Go and find out what's going on for us. Uh, guilty across the board, I bet. Probably. Uh, get one of those laptop platforms with fans in them meant for cooling laptops. I bet it fixes the issue at least until it gets worse. Yeah, I'll have to... Um, I'll go on Amazon and look for that. I, it's on the start. I built it so the fans are like free, but I need a fan. Fill this in. My, hey, that was teamwork because I said there's something happened, things verdict. You went, you researched, and then you came back with the goods. So, Mighty, thank you very much for that. Line to get in the courthouse. I thought you a decent one. On the UK website, don't have to fund it, mate. It's more find me one. Um, oh, find yeah. I was gonna say find me one. Yes, I thought you said fund me. I was like, no, don't fund me. To only find it. So yeah, find it. This is too soon. They took a lesser charge. Damn it. Mighty be some well to a bit France. I'm not sure if you were if you know who Mighty Meat is, but Mighty Meat is that. An ex agent, so he used to be um, an agent, but he's no longer an agent, he's now a good guy. He no longer works um, with the bad guys, he's now one of the good guys. Bum, 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 ba, da, ba. Fuck it, branka has got 2,000 people with him. Jesus, mother wept. And here we are, but we've got 15, but we have 15 mighty people. <laughs> Fucking hell. But if there is a verdict today, that means I will stream the can read stuff tomorrow. And that means we're not carrying on with Peter Trigos then, because... Yeah, Mighty's cool. Oh, I mean, I've heard I've heard Mighty be called a lot of stuff. Cool is not one of them. <laughs> the verdict's in. They are going to read it in about um, 10, 15 minutes. There we go. Thanks, Baseball Dad. Is Branca still saying not good? I, I have no idea. Oh, here we go. I have no idea, to be quite honest with you. FM, I don't know. I've not watched it. I just went there to see where I was, and was, I'm right at the bottom for viewers. <laughs> so I was like, fuck. But Branca's right up there. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Please be seated. <clears throat> All right, we are back in session on the record in State of Wisconsin versus Nikolai Mew. Uh, the attorneys are present with Mr. Mew. 12 jurors are in the courtroom. Mr. Ashland, I understand you are the foreperson. Yes. Did your jury reach a verdict? Yeah. Did you reach a verdict on each of the six counts? Yes, we did. Please hand the verdict forms to the bailiff. Hmm. 
Verdicts read as follows. As to count one of the information, Isaac Schumann, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree reckless homicide as submitted. Question, did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count two of the information, Alexander Martin, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count three of the information, Dante Carlson, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count four of the information, Anthony Carlson, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count five of the information, Riley Madison, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as submitted. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. As to count six of the information, Madison Cohen, the jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of battery as charged. Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. Uh, members of the jury, uh, I do have to verify that this is in fact a unanimous verdict. Uh, so I'm going to ask each of you if I correctly read the verdict uh, and if you agree with it. Uh, so when I call your name, uh, if you agree with the verdict that I read, please answer by saying yes. If you disagree with the verdict, you can answer by saying no. Uh, Ms. Navarro, uh, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cook, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Snell, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. Belzil, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Mr. Wiley, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Uh, Ms. Knapp, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Diedrich, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. McMahon, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Henderlong, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Mr. Ashland, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. McMullen, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Ms. Lewandowski, do you agree with the verdict that I read? Yes. Any additional polling? No? All right, it is a unanimous verdict. Members of the jury, your service in this case is completed. Uh, you are free to read accounts about this trial. Uh, you are free to talk about this case with anyone. However, uh, you do not have to discuss this case with anybody or answer any questions about this case other than from the court. So this includes the parties, the lawyers, the media, or anybody else. If you do decide to discuss this case with anyone, please treat any such discussion with a degree of solemnity, such that whatever you would say, you'd be willing to say in front of your fellow jurors or here in open court. It is in the public interest that there be the utmost freedom of debate in the jury room and that jurors be permitted to express their views without fear of incurring the anger of any litigants or the public. For that reason, please respect the privacy of the views of your fellow jurors. If you do decide to speak, please only speak for yourselves and not for anybody else. On behalf of my colleagues, Judges Needham, Vlack, and Nordstrand, along with my courtroom staff, thank you for your participation in this important case. Court is now adjourned. Please take the jury out. All rise for the jury. Please be seated. <clears throat> Based on the unanimous verdict, I will enter uh, convictions on each of the six counts. Uh, bail is revoked. Uh, Mr. Mew will be held in custody pending sentencing. Um, my staff will contact uh, the attorneys and will schedule the sentencing date. I will order a pre-sentence investigation report, um, but we can uh, do the scheduling at a later time. Is there anything else, Mr. Anderson? No. Uh, Mr. Shroffacy? All right. Thank you, everyone. Court is adjourned.
um, <laughs> FM I've sent it to him on um, on Twitter <laughs> I am not seeing you. Okay, so I isn't it? All right, we are back in six weeks. Oh, Isaac, as submitted. Question Did Mr. Mew commit the crime while using a dangerous weapon? Answer Yes. As to count two of the information, Alexander Martin. The jury finds Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety. Okay, so it's a reckless one. So is the lesser charge then? Fucking hell. Okay. Okay, so they're going out. They will be obviously back at some point for sentencing and stuff like that. Um, So he, he, he wasn't found guilty for the intentional homicide. He was found guilty for the uh, first degree um, reckless homicide. Um, hang on. We have a very special guest. Everyone's here for him. Hang on. We'll put him straight on. Straight on blast. Straight Hi, on guys. Hello. 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 Did you watch it? I No, I literally just got back in the door. I was out this morning. So I, okay, I just heard. We watched I just heard. Do you want to watch it or do you want to? I mean, I, I'm sure. Like, I heard, I heard it. That that's enough right now. Um, yeah, I, I said this is going to happen. It's it's a travesty, but it did. So that that's part that sucks yeah. about this. Hang on, I'm Let me put my headphones on. Um, I'm just going to switch to my headphones because I mm -hmm. couldn't. You keep you keep going, man. I'm just gonna switch my headphones. I'll keep talking. All right. Yeah, guys, I, I shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't have happened, but he is the at the end of the day, he's kind of the architect of his own demise. No, I it's not... why I'm back. Go on. Oh, are you ready for me to talk or you want me to stop? Sorry, I, okay, I okay. just literally oh, okay. got back. Go on. Yeah, I mean, I he was kind of the architect of his own demise. Uh, had he not dumped that knife, had he... And here's the thing. I get it. He was scared. He made dumb decisions. Maybe he did. Maybe they really were stupid. I don't know. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. You know what a jury sees? They see a guy covering his tracks. They see a guy acting like any crazy asshole who murders people. So he is the architect of his own demise. All this nonsense about, like, the John Wick fight and everything. Sure, I mean, we can give that to him, too. But I think you run into the problem after a while of what really happened and what does he really know? You know, do I not feel, do I, do I feel, yeah, it sucks. Isaac is dead and all these other people caught a knife. But I don't feel bad for him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's. I don't feel bad for them. I feel bad for Nikolai Mew. Honestly, that's that's where I am yeah. with this. They don't, you know, they 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 were able to buy a ticket on this train, and then they got to jump off when they didn't like it. Yeah, it it was a quick verdict as well. I I didn't expect it that quick. Oh, I, I mean, it's not a surprise. I was hoping they. They would drag this out a little bit, but it's it's yeah. not too. This isn't that. This isn't that old, like short. I mean, they gave him a couple <laughs> hours. I mean, now it's like it's total like what six and a half, seven hours of deliberation. Yeah, so they started at Corpus State this morning, so are yeah. that central? So whatever that is in central now, I'm not sure. Well, that would have been uh, well quarter past eight would have been nine a.m. Eastern, so. Just under two and a half hours, so that's like five and a half, six hours. That's that's pretty reasonable. Uh, I can't wait to hear I some of their answers, but I'm sure a lot of it's going to be just he looked at. I mean, he the way he acted is bad. And 
before we maybe I will go back into mm -hmm. that for a second, but I got a question that's burning in my mind about this, mm -hmm. right? And you, you might know this, but what's really pissed me off about this is mm -hmm. obviously I, I'm sure it's valid, valid, and you can do it, but I never knew that you could set a charge of first degree intentional homicide and then at the end of it introduce more charges lesser charges is that quite normal or is it quite unique in your that, experience to do that it's pretty normal it's pretty normal okay. now a lot of times like it happened during Kyle Rittenhouse you see that um uh, prosecutors they do this routinely because they want to go out there with the heaviest hardest hitting thing and then as they realize their case starts getting eaten into they get a little scared and they want that lesser included to catch things or there are times where the defense attorneys have shown enough evidence to show we give the juries um alternates like alternate theories that hey you know cuz those lesser charges yeah they're up to 60 years but it's still not life um, for Nikolai Mew. It, it's life anyway, mm -hmm. but there's times where as a defense attorney, you might want to include a lesser included. Typically the prosecutor is the only one doing it, but yeah. there are times where I I've, I've seen it asked for um, none of my, none of the trials I've ever had as a defense attorney. I've ever asked for a lesser included, but I can see times where it does happen and it makes total sense. So his sentencing is, is life. It to a maximum of 60, however, there's mitigated, mitigating circumstances that could lessen well, it to up well, to 40. Well, no, no, he's looking at life right now for the first... He, it was first degree intentional, right? R no, reckless. reckless. Oh, yeah. well, so let's say he gets 20 years. That's life for him. 20 years in prison yeah. with a bad heart like that? Yeah, I don't think he makes it. Because it's six charges as well you know mm -hmm. i know they'll run concurrently probably well you look at a minimum of 20 it's up you? to the judge to do that so he might run them he might stack them up yeah you he, he might but as you say 20 plus years is is that he's done anyway um mm -hmm. in that sense he's 54 yeah. bad ticker yeah it's not it's not mm -hmm. looking good yet yeah. no it was a it was a reckless across the board it was so the, that's why I was talking about the um, lesser charges. You know, they obviously had a massive influence in this, probably. Oh, I um, think so. You know, um, right. Hang on, there's some questions for you here um, before we get asking more. Um, hang on. Oh, Sean, everyone's happy to see Sean in the chat. Look how dapper Sean is. I bet he has nice socks on. <laughs> Sean, Sean, you should have prayed more to the tubes, Sean. The, the tubes. No, 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 the tubes. Aaron, Aaron, hey there, Aaron. Hey there. Because Aaron, Aaron's using that Wisconsin accent. She, she, uh, I told you last time, she sent me the Aliens video. I'll tell you this quickly. Um, a couple of days ago, I played your video on screen, mm -hmm. and I literally lost probably, I think, 80% of my viewers. Um, I, for whatever reason, it was just hilarious. For which um, joke how was it? People get it was it was just that you say about call the cops for whatever reason. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was just a coincidence. Do you know what I mean? But literally, well, everyone just called a the coincidence. Chat. But I appreciate that you saying nice. it like that. But we know why they left. <laughs> no, it's all good. We kept going. I don't want them though. Do you know what I mean? If they can't agree <laughs> with that, yeah. uh, uh, Branca says insanely unjust. I agree. It's, it's unjust. It's unjust. Um, um, I was gonna put it on locals, but you already put it up there, sweetheart. Oh, she's too good for you. Maybe each member of the jury will put. Yeah, yeah, they might might come out and say, "How likely is it though? Do you mm -hmm. in your experience ever I mean, come here, out here's, and say it?" Here, here's the thing, though, and this is where I somebody asked. Um, Merch Turf is asking about the proportionality thing. I was gonna say that now. Yeah. So, do you know about the dumpster bros case? The dumpster, the father no. son. They were out in Texas. No. Oh, okay. Well. We're going to watch this real quick because this cool. is a learning lesson about things. Here we go. Um, you get to watch a guy get dusted. So, See, we're it's, learning. It's, 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 it's good. It's got, it's got some action. Let me find a good. Um, let's see here. Now, I will say this case probably wouldn't have happened in Ohio. Nikolai Mew might not have been in, he might not have had to stand trial. Mm. Um, and that's, let me see here. 
And that's because we don't do informations in Ohio. You actually have to be indicted for felony offenses. It's, Where, yeah, it's always we. This is what always confuses me with the, all the mm -hmm. rules in st different states mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yeah, okay, here we go. Let's see if this. If you pop it on, I'll pop it up then. Yeah, we're gonna have to watch this, but it's it's it, we don't have the full. Okay, so these are two yahoos in Texas fighting with their neighbor over trash going in a community dumpster that the city comes and cleans out. Okay. And these people, every mostly most of your viewers probably know who this are. This is the Dumpster Bros. So you're ready for it? Yeah, let's go. And this occurs in Texas. Got closer to me. I'm you. <laughs> so this is the father. That's the son. Um, there's better quality footage. I couldn't find it right away, but this is obviously he's got a gun and the son's got a gun. So here we go. Hey, you hear him saying he's gonna kill me? Yes. I'm at the dumpster. Put the gun up and go inside. You pulled a gun in front you of our children. You pulled a gun in front of my kids with a f***ing mattress. F*** you. Point it at me, you if, you come, if you come within three foot of me, I'm going to kill you. Okay. You're not going to shoot my husband. Well, shoot me. You're dead. Point it. Point it. So there you go. And that's just an example of, so the son got acquitted. They went to trial. Son got acquitted. Yep. Dad's in prison for life. Oof. Um, this idea, though, with jurors, they're never going to find them. That, 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 that idea, I hope they find themselves in that situation. Here's the idea. Most of those jurors, you would say, well, do you have the right to defend yourself? And they'd say, yeah, you have the right to protect yourself. Okay, well. Do you have the right to protect yourself? Like how? And they like they agree with the conceptual idea that I can pull. Oh, where did I put it? I can pull out a pistol and defend myself from a man who comes up to me and knife says, "Give me all your money." They agree with that idea. They don't carry a gun because they're like, I don't see it happening. They would definitely agree with the idea that you and they they might they might do this. Someone breaks in their home, they're fucking killing that person. Cool. They agree with that. The idea that you got it on in a dusty alleyway over garbage being thrown away is mind blowing to them. Okay. For Nikolai Mew, he got it on out on a river while all, including himself, everybody's liquored up screaming and hooting like a bunch of morons and he took people out i mean he he wrecked i mean he obviously killed isaac but aj he split that dude from stem to stern and the other people i mean they they both took some pretty good sticks i mean had yeah. they been in a more rural location there might have been two or three dead yeah. So that that that's where you're starting with these people. They're not like people like you or me who'd be on a jury because people like me or you get weeded out pretty quick. You're getting you're getting normies. You're getting people whose ideas. Well, I would just walk away or I like I've said, Nick, I come up like, howdy, guys, I'm looking for something. Have you guys seen a cell phone over here? Or, you know what they they would or or they'd say, you know, I'll oh, fuck it. We're not going to look for it. any number of things. Um, these are also people who are like, well, I'm not going to go get liquored up and go drink in the tubes. There's there are that's the big problem when you get to using violent force like Kyle Rittenhouse's jury. That jury I get. Well, I mean, Kenosha was a little different because Kenosha burned to the ground. But overall, the idea. Um, yeah, it's. It's a rough sale. No show, and I've only just recently seen that one. Um, I got. Let's see what the the his oh, attorneys are saying. His I, attorneys, I, yeah, I let's go. This. And I'm sorry, that was that was a little bit rambly, but oh, no, I guess it's, not, I, it's good. It's good. I have the good video. I like too, the, by the way. Okay, I like you rambly because it's like I, I feel like I'm learning. So um, you say that now, not not later. Uh, <laughs> hold on, let me just. Uh, Do you know. So with deep sadness, 
How's Nikolai doing? What was his reaction to Calgary? He's, I thought, showed appropriate emotion throughout. You know, he's had a, a deep sadness. And uh, as he said on the initial tape to the police, he said, you know, he was sorry. Uh, I know when this case uh, first started and there was talks about what we could do to help alleviate some of the uh, stress and pain uh, that other people were feeling. We did what we could in that moment. And I think that was a large part because uh, Nick wanted to take the lead on that. And so uh, he continues to feel those feelings. He's sad, obviously disappointed in the result and, um, you know, contemplating his future life. Did he tell you anything? Uh, I told us lots of things. Can you share? Uh, shared what I wanted. Also, these charges were added on at the end. That's something the public's, you know, that aren't used to trials may not completely understand. Can you touch on that as well as like what kind of penalties he could be facing now? Yeah, yeah. So he was originally charged with intentional crimes. Um, by deduction, it, uh, it seems like he was found. They couldn't agree on the intentional crime, so they moved on to the reckless, and that's what he was charged with. Reckless crimes are a lesser included offense of the intentional crimes there's still substantial life-changing penalties that he faces what was your thought coming into today when you walked in the courthouse did you feel good about the case you know like uh we felt like we had a good case we felt like we had a good defense we felt like we put on a good defense um but in many ways Self-defense is a community standard, and it's very dependent upon which group of 12 people within the community you ask. Uh, I understand and appreciate that. Um, we had a lot of complex feelings going in. We felt confident, um, but we're also aware that it's it's not math. It's not black and white. It's a, it's a community standard. Were you expecting a verdict today when you walked in? Did you feel like they wanted to get something? No real expectations, whatever. With juries are unpredictable, so. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll keep it on. The and background. those who might not have watched our ongoing gavel to gavel coverage, that is. I'll keep it on the background just in case, but um, I remove that. Um, I mean, obviously, that's, sad, sad times. It is, but that's. It's it can be, those people are. People are saying it's it should be based on the law, not on the feelings. That's true, but the jurors are meant to do their assessments of the law and the facts using their everyday life experiences that they've had in their life. And what is a reasonably what's a reasonable man? What's a, what would a reasonable person in Nikolai's spot have that similar belief? Because it's not only that he had a fear, Nikolai had fear, sure, was a reasonable. And the fact that they got those, they got the state got lucky. Because if this, if this was just stuck on the intentional, I think it's probably a hung jury. Agreed. But Agreed. that's why I, I don't like lesser included because if the state thought that they should have charged that, you know, and I think it's funny because I had a case once where the state asked for included and I objected. And I was fighting tooth and nail and before we got to that part. And the judge said, what's your reasoning? I said, judge, there's no new evidence. I said, you can ask the state. This case has played out exactly how they thought it was going to go and how I thought it was going to go. So for them to say now, oh, well, we want to make sure. Well, there's, you know, the testimony now could support new charges. The testimony could have supported those charges from the start. The state wanted to. And I, I point out the state wanted to go for blood. The state was going for the gold. And now they realize, oh, I guess our performance isn't that good. They want to settle for the bronze. I said, that's not fair. That's not how there should be. The state knew this. There wasn't anything new. And the judge did look at the prosecutor. The prosecutor starts talking. He's like, well, he said, address the point. Was this anything you didn't expect? And he said, well, no. He's like, you don't seem to have been taken by surprise. And ultimately, he did let them do it, but he grilled them for a minute. And yeah, I mean, generally, it happens. Happens everywhere. This, yeah. this is part for the course. So that's leading on to Merv's question about if it happens everywhere. I just haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. As a lay, lay person, yeah, I, 
it really mm-hmm. bothered me because I said, well, and the chat said, I bet they will try and do this because I don't think they've proven beyond reasonable doubt that was intentional. Mm-hmm. So the only way they can win is to bring that in. It just bothers me that they do that. You know, um, mm-hmm. uh, I know oh, that I, there's a journey speak and stuff like that, but yeah. as a normal person, it's like, I think, I think for the state, it should be a suicide pact. They're stuck with what they did. Now, if the defense wants to add things, I think the defense should always have the right because Nikolai, you know, Corey Chirafisi and Aaron Nelson, they didn't charge him. So if they determine, oh, wow, we think there's better charges out there, they should have the uncontested right to do so. But to allow the state to come back and hedge their bets, I I detest that idea that they're continually allowed Mm -hmm. to do that. You know, you, you know, fucking Carl Anderson came in there, whipped out his dick and slapped that on the table with that information and said, he's the bad man. This is all intentional first screen homicide. Congratulations. You made the bet. The the roulette wheel is the roulette wheel is now spinning, no more bets. Yeah. But now as the ball's starting to bounce, he's getting a little nervous. He's like, "Oh, instead of red, I want some black on the table." And now he's starting to get nervous. I I can't stand that when they do that. Mm-hmm. Like you shouldn't be yeah. allowed to. Hey, you made your bet. You were confident this is what was going to happen. You had that confidence up until the trial started. You've had two years, and now you're like, well, I'm not so sure. Well, that's probably a reason why you should have been a little more careful in your charging decisions. Yeah, That's, the, that's where we have like, that point. I even read the charges before, and I said, mm-hmm. I don't think it fits. This. Oh, I read the charges. You I know. mean, it looked intentional as shit. I mean, but, your intent is discerned from your actions. And remember, the intent is in a second. I mean, yeah, he okay. clearly intended to use force. And yeah, he didn't intend for the guy to die, but he's carrying a knife and he's you're stabbing someone hoping you you cause serious and uh, you cause serious bodily harm or death to stop the threat. Well, mm-hmm. you know, you start whipping a blade around. I don't see how you could recklessly do that. I mean, if he was just spinning okay. around, walking around, just spinning around a circle. OK, I can see that being reckless. But no, Nikolai was putting in work. Nikolai was he he. He stabbed that in AJ and tickled his intestines and his spleen. You know, Isaac, Isaac, for some reason at the end, and that that's the real tragedy of this whole thing. The fight's yeah. all going, but then Isaac decides to jump in like like a dumb fuck right at the end. He wanted to meet too. He wanted to get in his lick, and you know, he he got licked. So hmm, I know. Yeah, that's, it's so unfortunate. It, it is. It's it's totally unfortunate. But that's. Like I said, when you guys use force, you there's a world of people out there. They are normies. You are using deadly force. Absent you blowing someone. Have you ever heard my story about how I almost killed my stereo? No, no. Okay. We moved into my house. When I was married, we moved into our house. And we had a house like moving party and everybody helped us set stuff up. And then in the middle of the night, it's like Friday night. It's like, so Saturday, Friday night, Saturday morning, like 2.30 in the morning. All of a sudden, my wife wakes me up and the stereo's full blast. Have you ever seen the movie The Jackal with Bruce Willis in it? Yeah. Okay, you know you know what part I'm talking about, right? Where yeah, the music's going, yeah. he starts killing everybody. And yeah. I'm like, I'm waking up and I'm like, oh my God, what is that? I immediately, well, I, bet I grab my pistol and I point at the door and I'm like, all right, God, I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God, someone's in the house. This is, I'm like, uh oh, now we can't hear anything. So I'm aiming at the door and I I reach in the closet and I get out my rifle and I put the pistol on bed. I'm like, here you go. I'm going out there. And I said, here's the pistol. If I don't come, if anybody but me comes to the door, kill them. And she's like, well, why do you need a gun? I said, do you want to go out and check? And she's like, no. And I'm like, then I'm going out to check. And at the time, I was like, did you call 911? I'm like, no, I didn't even think about it. So I get it. And I start working my way around the corners. And I'm very, very slowly just starting to clear corners as I go down the hallway into where the house opens up. And I clear almost everything. And the lights are off still. But 
I can pretty sure there's nobody around until I get around the next the corner where the stereo is. And I've got it in my mind. If there's somebody standing there, I'm killing them. I don't care if it's a shadow that's this tall or it's a full size man. If it's a 10 year old, sorry, but why is he in my house? And I come around the corner and just. I hit the lights because there's a light switch and I hit the lights and I'm like, here we go. And I come around the corner and I about center punch my stereo. Somebody had set the sleep timer on it. Oh. Now, if I had killed a guy. And let's say it went in front of a grand jury. Grand jury is going to say, you know what? I personally don't know if I would have killed an intruder, but they're going to be like, that's cool. You get to, you get, you get to do that. We're not going to interfere with that. But when you kill somebody in a public setting, you really strain the populace's situation. Like, what was it about? And that's going to become the other issue. What was it over? And for like the dumpster bros, it was they're fighting over a fucking mattress. This guy. Nikolai and me and these kids were fighting. That was a that was retard jousting, really, at the end of the day. They they got into a fight over all that stuff. And you can argue, um, you know, you can argue, yeah, well, things got serious. Sure, they did. But you know, avoidance, the escalation, deterrence. Those are your friends. That's how you avoid getting in Nikolai Mew style situations. Sure, Nikolai didn't have to walk away, but in hindsight, should he have? They could have been like, oh, faggot, you're walking away. You're being a pussy. You're being a bitch, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and you know what? You walk away. Um, if I'd been in his situation, like, like, oh, he's a raper. He's a raper, whatever. And honestly, like, Riley Mad Riley Cohen and Riley Madison and fucking illiterate hillbilly spellings of whatever the names were out there and AJ and Dante and all that, like a bunch of drunk white trash hillbillies. Okay, great. Like you're getting yelled at by some white Karen, chubby white Karen, who's got her hands full of you know, white claws and her vape. It's like, you already know who the fuck that person is. I don't piss on that turd and walk yeah. away. Um, but did he have the right to use the law the way he did? Yes. But my point is, like, when you start engaging with people, you better have in your head, I'm willing to go to fucking prison for the rest of my life if something happens. Like, once it started going, like, are you prepared to go to, like, are you prepared for that? Is that the, are you willing to die on that hill? I don't think Nikolai Mew really was in hindsight. But, like, if yeah. I'm carrying my gun and I pull it out, I better be willing to go to fucking jail over that. If you're not, you're not mentally prepared for that. You better not be. And that's that. That's mm -hmm. how I counsel people. When you're using force, you'd better be willing because all it takes the jury to say, "No, we disagree. We don't think it was self-defense." And unless it was something as simple, like clear as in my house, or let's say I'm at the mall and I'm at the food court and I'm eating Chick Fil A because I'm a big fat fuck and I love Chick Fil A and I'm just cramming it in my pie hole and some guy walks into the food court and starts screaming Allahu Akbar and starts mowing people down and I turn around pull out my pistol and just boop 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 and kill him let's say I get indicted and a jury convicts me an appeals court will overturn that but I you know at, like that's you know that's just yeah well you say appeal. There's a question just now. I missed this. Apologies, whoever wrote it. Yeah. I what's his chances if on there's... appeal? Yeah. I mean, the appeals court standard, the court of appeals will look at it from the standard of, they'll sit in as a 13th jury and they'll say, did the jury completely lose their way? And it doesn't appear so. Yeah. Overturning a jury verdict is immensely hard. Even if they come out and they're just like, oh, fuck that guy. You know, if they come out and they're all happy and laughing and they're like, we didn't believe a goddamn word. He, like, if they just say, like, we don't believe a goddamn word he says. Okay. Juries, are, they're allowed to weigh credibility. Yeah. It's not a true, it's a, it's a manifest injustice in the sense of, like, truly was justice done today. But in the legal terms, like, when a court's looking at this, this is not a manifest injustice. So he's going away. 
I mean, you file yeah. your appeal. Well, maybe the court, maybe like yeah, you're you're buying lottery ticket territory when you're doing appeals. Uh, we we still don't know what what the before I was asked about sentencing. Uh, going by what Google says, is a maximum sixty. I'm not trying 60. to do them, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. It's all good. Uh, up to sixty, but maybe forty mit with mitigating circumstances. But yeah. as Sean said, look, it's probably going to be twenty-five, around twenty-five. Well, let's just say it's fifteen possibly. years. He comes out. He's yeah. He's going to be almost seventy. Yeah, even if he's 15, 70 years old, with our health, I'm yeah. not even sure that he's going to come out out after well, fifteen years. Even if he's a healthy fifty-year-old male, prison takes a toll on you. Prison takes a toll on you. Yeah. Um. We'll go with this. So uh, before I go to the chat, so I was watching Peter Tragos, okay? Just yeah. to get Hello, Peter. Great what guy. that was, because he, yeah, he was an analyze and everything. And it was, it was interesting to me to hear that most of his chat were mm -hmm. all saying, we can't get over the lies, the lies, the lies, the lies. Yeah, lies. the lies are That's bad. They were in. They're horrible. Yeah. Because so, you've got two conclusions. He's either dumb or he's a bad guy. Um, let, like, let's say, you know, when this is, this is fake, this is a safety item. This is not real. This is a training aid. YouTube. I use this in a shooting. I shoot a guy in self-defense, but I take it and I wipe it down. Like there's video of me. I'm like, oh fuck. I wipe down and I take it apart and throw it in the, the drain and run off. You know, people, two types of people destroy evidence, stupid people and bad guys. Well, if you're a bad guy, that's yeah, that's not good. You're you're toast. But if you're stupid, is that really people on a jury are not going to be thrilled that stupid people are running? You're you're an idiot. You're running around doing this. That's mm -hmm. going to make them mad as well. That's going to make a prosecutor mad. Like that's yeah. Oh, good, Charlie yeah. says, "Would buck breaking an intruder at home be something a grand jury would think is excessive?" Well, that guy in Australia did it, and he got in trouble. So, yes, that would not be a good idea. You know what we're talking about? It, oh, the bucks. Okay, well, the... well buck, buck, buck breaking is, uh, okay. So in the 1619, my slavery was, you know, slavery community. They believed there was this term called buck breaking where white slave masters would sodomize the black males and break them. Yeah, right. I'm not making this shit up. This is really this is a real thing. If you go on Google and or YouTube or uh, sorry Twitter, Google buck breaking. Some of the major uh, black activists out there believe this was a real thing. But there was a case in Australia okay. recently where the guy a guy had broken into a home and he broke into a home with some meth addicts in it, and they raped him to death. And yeah. That's not what I thought it would be. I thought when you say buck, I was looking for like one of those bucks, wherever you call them, uh, deer or wherever. Oh, I yeah. Well, those are bucks. That. Yeah, well, those yeah, are bucks. Those are, that, that's called a buck as a well. Yeah, different. That's a little bit slightly different. This is <laughs> back yeah. when, when people were considered property. They were considered like breeding animals. Yes. So. Um, I think here the consensus is the same. Everyone's like, it's an unfortunate incident. What yeah, his behavior right. afterwards did not help him. It is um, it, that you, everything you say and do can and will be used against you. Yeah. But I remember, though, I also have the feeling that even if he hadn't done all of that, a jury is going to be very hard pressed that you ran up. Well, not, and I'm, I'm using this colloquially that you went up to a group of people over something simple, looking for a phone, and there's dead bodies in the river after that. Because he is even say lying and try to oh, hide. Oh, yeah, I, I guarantee probably. you he got charged because he lied and was sketchy and his story didn't match. There but for are, the jury, yeah. I, I, you know, even if he hadn't, I think that, you know, remember, that 90-year-old lady, do you think she's ever, how much force do you think she's ever used in her life? All those people in that jury, how much force do you think they've ever used or ever thought about using or knowing people using force? They've probably watched video of a guy getting the beak sprayed off, and like like the street fights you see on YouTube. I've seen those. I've been in fights before. I was in a fight once where somebody kicked me in the face. Like, 
I've, you know, it's uh, most, most people don't get into fights. Most people have been punched in the face. So the it's, idea that it went, it even went this far is insane to them, much less if it was just a fist fight. I'm not sure. Did you see the makeup of the jury as well? I did. I did. In, in the, I don't know who. Oh, fight. so oh, so we found out later that the all the males got knocked out. Okay. Yeah, they're forty and sixty. Oops, got knocked out. But the age range, you know, twenties, thirties, forties. Was you start to get the fifties and seventies? This is why I was like, well, this is this is going to take a long time to decide. I thought, you know, because for me, it was like basically maybe five v seven um mm -hmm. where do you draw the line you know i'm not sure but i have a the... feeling it was probably more like 10 2 to start do right okay guilty i i have a feeling they're pretty much all guilty to start and there were only a couple they had to work through if it's, i it's, guess it just seems like i think someone said earlier on in the sense of it seems just it's a compromise this is it's like mm -hmm. let's meet in the middle yeah. And just split split in mm -hmm. half. Wherever the bill is, yeah. is split in half and go by that. Because why yep. you know, even why first degree reckless and not second degree reckless? Do you know what I mean? And what's the difference between second degree uh, intentional against first degree uh, reckless? Mm -hmm. Like how do they even get to that stage in, in some ways? I, I'm not sure. Um, which hopefully we will get answers for. It's worth trading. I mean, I, I had I, I've told the story before. I tried I had a trial. Back, uh, this would have been 2018, right before I started working as a prosecutor. Guy got a DUI on a bicycle. Jesus. Well, it was, it was, he'd had so many DUIs, it became a felony offense. So he's looking up to like 30 months of prison. We get through it. The trial's not super long. The jury's out for like three and a half hours. I was pretty proud of that. I was pretty proud of it because it wasn't, it didn't look good for us. But it was three and a half hours. And by about 5.45, they came back with a verdict. And I was I was sitting in the hallway, kind of cleaning up some of my stuff and getting ready to go. Um, I talked to one or two of the jurors, and they were just like, yeah, we just didn't buy it. I'm like, okay, fair enough. And the one guy came, comes over as a juror, and he's like, hey, do you have a second and like talk to you? I'm like, oh. I always want to talk to the jurors afterwards to find out what, why, what did they like? What did they like? I had one time a juror say they didn't like the color ties I was wearing. Okay. Oh, Keep that in mind. Well, no, they're just like, you didn't like, you know, like, no, overall you did fine. It's, you know, they're just like, didn't like this, didn't like that. Uh, but some of them will say like, you know, like a, it was an older lady. She's like, I just didn't like your color ties. I'm like, okay. You know, he said, well, you know, he's like, I was holding out, you know, things were changing and I was talking to him, I kind of joked and I'm like, you know, it's like 545. You're, you're telling me that it wasn't like you're worried about getting home in time for dinner or anything like that. And your wife getting mad at you. And he kind of chuckled. He's like, oh, I would never do that. And it's like they made a verdict because they wanted to go home because it was time for dinner. And they're like, you're, you know, th that happens. That happens. Like if this had gotten That's a Friday, so if this had gotten a Friday, be like, do we want to? Do I really want to fucking come back on Monday? No, it's Friday. It's almost noon. I want to get the fuck out of here. That's people. They have jurors have made those decisions before. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't even. You know, I know. I believe you, because uh, some of the stories that you do hear is a little bit frightening out there. Um, this is actually, I'm glad Joe's is here. I really wanted to ask you this, actually. I was going to send you a message about this. Um, why were they not allowed to take the video back, Sean? Um, well, it depends. On, it depends on the court. Sometimes there's it, evidentiary. The court doesn't allow that. Or if they want to watch it, they have to come out and watch it in front of everybody. Yeah. So that's that's uh -huh. all. You know, a lot of times we don't like that because... We don't want the, you know, making sure it's done the right way or played the right way, played the way it was presented um, in court. I, it, it all depends. I mean, that said, though, I've had cases where stuff has been taken back. And it, it's really entirely dependent. Like, I've had, like, phone calls or, uh, you know, forensic interview taken back. And they they went back and listened to, like, one of, you know, one of my cases where 
uh, the guy got acquitted. It was, you know, one of the most innocent men I've defended. Like they, they had the interview of the child and it went back with them. So it, it, it all depends. It all depends. That's fair. I mean, in reality, a... <laughs> it probably shouldn't have gone back there, but I knew it was going to help us. So I let it go. I didn't oppose it. That's fair. No, it was a question that came up. I answered something similar, but not uh, as mm-hmm. as uh, authoritative as you. You know why? But um, if they watched it three times. They came into court and watched it three times in total, mm-hmm. um, which we thought was a good thing, more than merrier. Um, Are you talking about the Mew case? They came back and watched it. Yeah. Okay. So they watched okay. it yesterday and today, this morning. First thing this morning, eight a.m. They watched oh. it again. So, I will say this much, and I'll say it out there: these guys are a bunch of these jurors are a bunch of fucking nonces. I'll say that. Dave is saying to you, tell Sean Oregon doesn't have a first degree murder, so the state would have offered well, a manslaughter charge. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of states don't have this where it's like these levels of reckless homicides. In Ohio, yeah, we'd be down to manslaughter pretty quick on this. So. Yeah, it's again, it's different states and stuff like that. I don't know, man. It's this is Joe. You know, I so I, I I found this. Also, trial. the other thing too is this nonsense in Wisconsin where you can ret- you don't have a duty to retreat, yeah. and it's called it's called a soft duty to retreat. That you don't have a duty to retreat, but the fact you didn't retreat can be used to determine your reasonableness. That's how it works in Wisconsin. I think that's highly unconstitutional because if you're telling me under the law I don't have to retreat, but then you can use my law, my compliance with the law as evidence that I committed a crime, I think that's highly unconstitutional. So like in Ohio, there's no duty to retreat. That's it. So the moment they talk about he could have walked away, objection, they don't have to. And the judge would instruct them in saying, he, there is no duty to retreat in the state of Ohio. He didn't have to walk away. Mm-hmm. And the court would have stopped that and, and probably would have brought him up and said, you fucking bring that up again. We're in mistrial territory. So part of the issue is Wisconsin does have some shitty, weird laws. I mean, yeah. I think I it mean... should be hard and fast. If I have a duty, if I have no duty to retreat, that's where it stops. He was there. He was doing, he wasn't breaking the law. He has a duty. He doesn't have a duty to retreat. Boom, done. Not this. Oh well, then you could turn around and still use it against people. I think that's horrible and unconstitutional. How does Sean think his, this verdict will affect future trials? I mean, it's it might. It might. I don't. I don't know how much. Remember what I said. I, I've said this on my channel a couple of times so far. This is one of these gray areas, and this this really, on you know the spectrum of, you know, you've got really really good and really really bad. This was like in the gray zone, and it was in the gray zone to like over here. This was borderline a bad use of force, in my opinion. Just the way this all unfolded, it was bad, and part of that is the optics. Because remember, um, well, I haven't mentioned this to you. But a jury trial is sales. Okay. There's two opposing yeah. parties trying to make a sale. To, like they're bidding. A, it's like a contract. And the jury's the jury put out a contract saying we want to bid on. We want to buy something in this case. Present us with your sales pitch. The state went. The defense went. And the jury said we're not. We're, we're actually accepting. Uh, we're accepting the prosecutor's bid. At the end of the day, you are selling a story, a narrative, everything. And part of that's optics. How does this thing look? What does it seem like? Um, yeah. And um, Aaron, you're saying you're dumbfounded how confident you were. I mean, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. It's um, use this as Nikolai Mew, Nikolai Mew paid the point. Nikolai Mew made it so you understand your community better. So that that's mm-hmm. how I would phrase it. And to be fair, it that was the it was a really bad use of force. I think there's a lot he could have done better there. Even, even yeah. in that situation. 
So yes. you use this as a use this as a uh, learning experience. Um, I want to show you this, right? Mm -hmm. I know we're jumping here, Sean. I apologize. I, no, I would go, go bounce around. To... I'm good till I'm good for another half hour. So fine. I, I was rushing it because I wasn't sure how long you had. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to show you this um, because this is also something because this is topical. We're talking about self defense and all that. And uh, I showed this video earlier on, and I want to show it again, see what the chat thought and what you thought about this as well. Um, because, well, we'll go into afterwards, but yeah, let's watch this. I'm not sure if you've seen it, Sean, or if the chat has seen this, but a little bit. Fine, I'll play yeah. it now. Hi, Sarah, how are you? How are you, Sarah? Hi, good. You know, different sentences that he. Sarah, I'm sorry uh, about this. Don't talk. Don't fucking talk. Idiot. Uh, yes, yeah, Sarah, we're really sorry about this and sending him your way today. Uh, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, so yeah, she, he's coming. Don't worry, he's coming home. Uh, and she's just like, oh, broke my nose. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Fuck you, cunt. Um, next time you fucking touch me, I'll fucking dick you. You understand? You understand, cunt? Hey, oh, Sarah, hang up. These idiots, she posted your fucking number in her cancer discord, and I was just being polite. Really, uh, yeah, touch me and I fucking dick your dumbass bitch. I'll fucking dick you. Alisa, yes. Um, as a woman, then dumb I don't know cut Sarah, the dumb retard in the middle of a session, and you choose she, she to leave under from the chat. She, she, no, she's a she's a fucking insane person. She's a she's a fucking fifty year old oh, dumb yeah. cunt oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in the middle of a street okay, dancing. Yes, yeah. yeah, Sarah, I heard you had a kid when you were sixteen. That's what he told me about you, yeah, she and he said you're a dumb Mexican. I said she's and he said you, you keep showing up, and he says you won't stop texting him. But I saw what? the text; it's the same shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? She's half your age. She's half your age. Delete the number, please. Ah! Ah! Oh, we're done, cunt. We're oh. all oh, we're done. Oh, 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 no, no, please, don't, don't. I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, I'll stop. Pull over. Okay, pull over, dumb okay, cunt. Oh, call 911. Oh, no, 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 no! Help! No, please, please, I'm sorry. Call 911. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, please, no, I'm so sorry. Please let me go. Please, please let me go. Oh, no, please, I'm so sorry. Please let me go. Oh, you're sorry, right? Get the fuck okay, out of here. Okay, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Are you killing me? <laughs> It's real, Dave. It's real. It's in California. That's real enough. If that's not real, they did a very good job. But I know it's real. And he just goes back in. Yeah. Um, so she also, got arrested my for. Mic was on, I'm sorry. No, so fine. She was got arrested for assault. Um, and I don't know what happened since then, but yeah. Good. So I I like that as an, uh, to show that because obviously a lot of discussion in this trial has been about. Um, you shouldn't hit a woman, you shouldn't do anything like that. But then mm -hmm. that's an example of like, where's the line of all this, these yeah. things if you don't love, you know? So, yeah, you're not supposed basically to broke his nose. You know, people say that and you don't hit a woman. Well, that, that's finally different because the woman's actually hitting. And now, yeah, I, I, God, I hadn't heard all that. That's, that fucking warms my heart. Listen, how oh, it hurts. It hurts. She's lucky he didn't start fucking hammer fisting the shit out of her face because I'm not going to lie. If 2.0, well, she's a fed, so I get charged with assaulting a fed, but then I'd be fucked. <laughs> but I mean, I don't care who you are. You do that to me and you've got hair like that. I can grab. Guess what? I'm, I, I'd have been wrapping my hand with a handful of hair and just, and Conor McGregor just hammer fist you right. Like, oh yeah. He could throw an elbow. No, mm -hmm. don't throw an elbow. Just just start beating. You know, please stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. Like she, she bought a ticket and she went along. You you 
she bought a ticket on the train and she didn't like it didn't stop what she wanted well that's what happens the train doesn't stop where you want yeah i it, it is it, it's interesting mm -hmm. to me because you know uh, it I, again i always showed it because obviously the the world we're in right now yeah uh, in terms of uh, yeah. Because a lot of talk was you should never ever touch a woman. Doesn't matter if a woman, like for Nikolai, obviously that um, wherever name. Well, was, the, oh, the never, yeah, and the guy who said you never ever t th that guy looks like he's a fucking redditor, Janny. That guy looks like he's a Reddit mod, and the fact he only got a little poke hole in his chest, he's lucky. I'm sure he goes around like, oh, I fought this big heckin' maga chad. It was so scary. By golly. I'm sure mm -hmm. he's got the best karma on Reddit. So mm -hmm. that guy Hang never on. hit a woman. It's like hmm. I can't do it. I'd be trying to do your accent on there, Erin Hack in Minnesota, Minneapolis. I can't do it. I can't do as good as oh, you. Well, you gotta, you gotta but, work uh, on doing a you gotta work on doing a regular US accent. But it's it's yeah, um, no, I know. They do their it's it's kinda like the you know, you have to do your Wisconsin. If you watch the movie Fargo, that's basically the accent there. You know, you got Keynes yeah. Fine. What's that? I will practice. What's I, I will practice. What's Keynes in? What's Keynes in? Okay. No, I, I need to practice. You, I can't even do proper there. English yet. So, you know. Uh... Well, like, you, you got to do <laughs> like tube. 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 Yeah, there, uh, there you go at the end. You got to get that. You got to be on the U's. You gonna be like, hey so, there, Dylan. Hey there, Dylan. You should tell Sean about the other Sean. Maybe he yes. wants to join in one day for the KR trial. Oh, you betcha. That'd be a great day. That'd be a real barn burner. Karen Reed trial. Have you followed it at all? Ah, uh, no. So no, I, mean, I, I know what Karen. I, so here's the, I know what Karen reads about, but the moment I saw Turtle Boy's face on it, I said nope. And I pulled yeah. the handles and ejected yeah. because I know Turtle Boy. I dealt with him, not personally, but one of the people I've had to deal with in circles, Chili DeCastro. Chili DeCastro and Turtle Boy were like friends. Okay. Okay. And they were involved in all kinds of stupidity up in Boston against another person who is a massive troll. Her name is Kate, and she runs this... Uh, she has a group. Um, if you ever heard of the Mass Hole, the Mass Hole Report... Kate Peters. Yeah, Kate Peters. Yeah, Kate Peters. You, you know Kate. Okay. That whole thing where Chili tried to sue Kate and Chili's up there... Do you remember any of that when it happened about a year and a half ago? No. Okay. I... So Chili goes up there, and Kate confronts Chili, and Chili runs away like a little bitch, runs to the police, like complete bitched out tries to sue k tries to get restraining orders well turtle boy was helping chili and once i like turtle boy is a complete dipshit once that all happened though when i saw turtle boys affiliated with uh karen reed i'm like i'm sure she's either lying about what happened or she's 100 percent guilty and i just i just was like and everybody's like well you know the prosecutors are crooked there i'm like i'm sure they are but i'm also sure like i kind of get the feeling this has been kind of a ginned up defense to an extent. And that's, so, and, and, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I will tell you when turtle boy is your champion, I assume you probably murdered half the people at Auschwitz. So. I, so I had a similar reaction to you, mind. I did okay. at, the, at the beginning. I actually made two videos calling turtle boy, uh, a cunt piece of shit, everything. Do not, I hated it. Hated don't it. stop there and yeah stop there. it's done i have to say i did listen to a lot of people then in my year about look forget about what he's done because i don't agree with anything he's done but i will give him one compliment in the sense of if it wasn't for his kind of in your face kind of media this can't read trial would have been under the carpet there was no media for it it was all hidden there was nothing uh, so I give him credit for that, that without him, there wouldn't have been this exposure for it. So that's why I sit with it. I do not, not agree with what, what he's done, how he's done it, but I am glad that he brought it into the, into the spotlight. And that's when I did my research then after that. 
Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I called him out for weeks. I, I hated him. Yeah, called I him mean, every even, name in the, in the sun. And all the stuff that happened with him, it turns out he manufactured an exhibit like for, and I don't even know, like for his domestic violence issues. And one of the things he got in trouble for, he's like, I got proof, and it turns out he lied and made shit up. So it's like, further point, I'm I'm out. No, I and you. I yeah, he's broken coming. corruption cases. Sure, he's done a lot of good stuff. But it, it's like the saying goes, Wicked Psych, you can build a million bridges and history may remember you as a bridge builder. You suck one cock and history will know you forever as a cocksucker. So I don't disagree with that. I mean, I, I got you on it. I do I do hope <laughs> that like so Aaron's asking if you can join. I'd love <laughs> to have you on with so <laughs> Sean that she's talking about is uh El Jefe. Jo- Josie's so teach me how to say El Jefe. So Sean El Jefe. El uh, Jefe, uh, no, you're doing it right. You're doing it right. El Jefe. Yeah. You got she, it. You got it. I, I, used to, I used to say El Jefe. So so that that's why Josie had to... To, to be fair, that's what oh. somebody where Aaron lives, they would call him El Jefe because, you know, pe- people in Wisconsin yeah. would say, we're eating, we're eating quesadillas tonight. Um, so Sean, he's an ex-special agent. Um so he was a special agent for 35 years and a uh, great guy. Um, loads of stories, everything like that. So he's joining me. Very so he started a YouTube channel about a month ago. Within one day, he had over 2,000 subscribers. Um, he's basically monetized after one stream. Um, great guy, loads of stories. Not everyone's cup of tea, but I, I enjoy him. So he's done a lot of research. Um uh, about the tail light and about some of the intricacies of of this case. So as I say, whatever you think about Tillboy, I, I I have not looked at his analysis of anything. I just heard about it through Tillboy. I did my own analysis and everything. That's why I got this. Uh, I, I, my stance has always been: I feel like she should never be in. She should never reach trial. Is my opinion. The evidence is not there. The evidence doesn't make sense. The evidence they said. Things that they said happened, they're now backtracking from. Um, and it's quite intriguing if you actually do look at some of the statements made. Whether she's guilty or not, we'll wait for a court of law to, to present all the evidence. But that's that's where I stand. Is they should never go to court. It is probably go to trial. So let's let's see what happens. But um, it is I don't know much other than that. I just know um some of the inconsistencies. Uh, and also, do you know Jennifer Coffin Daffer? Um I'm sure you know Jennifer Coffin Duffer, ex FBI. Oh, I know who she is. I'm yes, yeah, but I'm I, not, I I I, I know who she is. I, I will just state that I have nothing but utter contempt for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So Oh well, that's fine. I mean, I've got a jersey about it. I mean, I hate I hate Jennifer Coffin Duffer. She she is a piece I, of shit. I, so. any, any of you guys out there, you ever see Jennifer Coffin Duffer on things? Ask her about whether does she think Lon Horiuchi murdered Vicky Weaver? That'll tell you what you need to know. Because I'm curious if she'll answer that question. You could ask her about any case she's covering. She's wrong on every fucking case, man. Well, that that doesn't mean anything if people are wrong in a case. But guys, ask 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 Jennifer Coffendoffer, uh, what's her opinion on Lauren Lon Horiuchi sh- murdering Vicky Weaver? Let's see what he let, I'm curious to know what she thinks. So I got my teacher ready for because my question's never been asked. So this is yeah. a statement she made on Core TV. She pulls away and the taillight is well intact, right? She made that mm-hmm. statement on Core TV about the car. Mm-hmm. She now denies that she even said it in the first place. So was, even the, was the taillight like, damaged? It had a crack in it. but she, So basically, it's intact. Like she says, she's right. But it hit something. She's right. But it hit the car behind her. So I'm not sure if you can see the car. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you can't quite see the car behind her, but maybe in the corner. But essentially... The Commonwealth are saying that the taillight was smashed and found at the place where uh, the guy was alleviated yeah. um, at a certain time, at half 12 in the morning, when yeah. we got this at 5.08 in the morning and it's still intact, like Jennifer says. But now she's denying that she ever said it. It's like, huh. how stupid can you be? It's on TV. You know? she's, so, she's a fad. Anyway, she's, gonna... for... she's a career fad. Yeah, Jesus, and she's she's Christ part of the American Cheka. That's what the FBI people like to think the FBI was noble. No, the FBI started out as Jagger Hoover saw what Felix Drzinski was doing over in Russia and was like, "I want that." Oops. So what did he do? 
He made a blackmail organization full of armed thugs who went around and did whatever they wanted and operated with impunity for decades. You know, they did COINTELPRO. They undermined the civil rights movement. Did all kinds yeah. of stuff. And then when J. Edgar Hoover dies, what happens? Well, they do things like, hey, we're going to make Whitey Bulger a criminal informant and give him and let their and let agents run wild protecting him. You got people like, you know, Robert Mueller who have a history of fucking up court cases. Then we get to what they did at Ruby Ridge, which I don't know if you knew who Vicki Weaver is, but no. uh, Vicki Weaver was a unarmed woman who was murdered at Ruby Ridge by an FBI sniper. During the Ruby Ridge standoff, the FBI hostage rescue team, their rules of engagement were engage any adult you see, regardless of whether they're armed or not. Any adult you can shoot. And they shot her as she was holding her baby. In the head, Jesus. through a door. Jesus Christ. And nobody went to prison for that. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's bizarre. Um. And I do um, need, I do need, I do need to catch up on the Karen Reed stuff. I know she's coming to trial soon. I will give it, guys. I'm not going to do a stream about it. I will look through the evidence. I will take a look at it. But no, I please just, do. And I'd love for you to join us one day. Uh, yeah. Open invite for you anytime you're free. But sure. I want to show you this quickly. Uh, this is so. This is the part of the evidence that's submitted. So this is the contentious one. Mm -hmm. As in, so these marks on his arms. Um, and legs yeah. and everything. They say that that is a uh, road rush. These are road rush, um, which I personally don't believe it. So, uh, but anyway, the mm, it could be. Well, it uh, there's reasons why I don't think it's road rush because he was on on grass. But um, but that's another. Uh, it wasn't another in the winter but, though. I mean, there's rocks and snow and ice. There, there was snow. Definitely a little bit yeah. of snow. You're right. Um, but the other side think that, or potentially thought that this was dog mm -hmm. uh, scratches, bites, and stuff. But I don't know that either. I'm not going to go down that line. But you're a dog lover. Is that something, Clyde, or anybody who could cause? Those are, people opinion? are saying those are dog bites. Uh, dog scratches, I think. Like if if there was a timber wolf, like a wolf, like I want to, I get at the hunt from a helicopter running around. Not that 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 does not, you know, something like something with like actual like claw claws, sure. But even then, those those patterns don't look. There's not sets of like multiple claws. Like, I just I don't see a dog doing all of that. Yeah, that, that's what they originally um, was stating. The dog was involved in some mm -hmm. sort, but I, like that—that's just a portion of it. I'm not sure when. Yeah, I no, don't no, know I what the role is. But at the same time, um, I've never thought that. As in, I don't know until it goes to trial. But th those are kind of intricacies that I read. There's a lot of different things. You, I think you would enjoy this trial. There's a lot of I stuff might, in I it. Might. But I will I say, Turtle Boy, it. like Turtle Boy, kind of ruined it. Like, and I will say what Turtle Boy did. If he was going out, like, you know how a journalist does things? A journalist goes and confronts these witnesses and say, hey, I think you're lying. You need to fix this. A journalist doesn't go on Facebook and say, hey, everybody, I'm meeting this person at their house. Come help. Like, let's be part of the let's be part of the team. That, no, I like I said, all that stuff he did, it turned me off because I'm like, if you're doing all that. And she's going to trial next week. Well, I guess I'll work on because I don't have trial this week. Um, I don't know. So my guy pled out, so I have some free time. Well, I gotta get my taxes done too. But she's got a hearing tomorrow um mm. about all the court documents and stuff like that. Um that the trial is going forward on Tuesday. Thanks, Stabby. Sixteenth. So sixteenth of April is is beginning. Um I got this now from you. Hang on, let me play it. This is the high def oh, of those guys in the shooting. Yeah, if you open it up all the way, it'll be better. Yeah, I'll just crank it. You're dead. I promise you, you're dead. It is an alley. You're in an alley with a fucking shotgun, you little piece of shit. I'm going to tell you. I doubt it. 
Best. First of all, if you're going to show this video to the cops, you might want to stop yelling. Oh, no. I don't give a fuck. I will fucking kill you. Back you pull the gun from my kid. Back you pull that gun one more time, Lafar. I'm taking it up with a bullet through your head. No, you won't. Bet. Point it out. Take a swing. Point it out. Go ahead. Point it out. Thank you, swing. In the meantime, this guy has been gesturing with a baseball bat. Take Point it at me. Back off. Point it at me again. Back off. Point it at me again. Back off. You're a dead man. I doubt it. Too. No, I don't give a fuck what the cops yeah, say. I don't really care what the cops don't say either. They don't tell you back up. You're, you're a bitch. I'm going to kill you too. I you will. Fuck you, you little faggot. Yeah, how's your wife and my kids doing, bitch? Jag off. You're dead. I doubt it. I better quit threatening. I doubt it. I ain't threatening shit. You walked out the fucking door. Fuck you, faggot. Fuck you, cocksucker. If you come come within three foot of me, I'm going to kill you. Okay. Now he's holding the bat menacingly. You're not going to shoot my husband. Shoot me. You're dead. Point it. Point it. I love her cries at the end. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, that was a bit I, bad of quality. I, I, lo- I love her cries at the end. She's like, you're not going to do it. It's like, well, honey, you didn't get a vote. Luke says, I th- it's hold gone. on. Luke, does Emily Baker have an opinion on, on, on next case? On Karen Reed? Yeah, she's oh. covering it. She's, she's um, covering, covering it. it. Does she think it's all she's, bullshit? I think she's covering it on starting Monday. Um, no, I don't. I does, does Emily D. Baker think the case is bullshit? I, I don't think she's curious. started. I believe Monday oh, she started. Oh, she hasn't it. started it yet. Okay, I was curious if I, she I, I'd not, an opinion on it yet. I, I've not. I don't. I don't believe so. Okay, um, from what I gather. Uh, but the man of the moment is here as well. Hey, David. Court of law. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, well, we've been sharing your channel, David. Uh, what's yes. happened to you? Uh, it's a little bit scary for those that yes. don't know. Dave is losing his channel in four days. Um, because Jeremy yeah, I know you... is a buck broken bitch boy. What he's a fucking prick, mate. I can't, no, he's a he's bitch. Doing this. He's a bitch. Yeah. It's um, he's a dickless fuck. It's it's scary because, like, uh, like it, David has got what 7,000 subscribers, wherever I've got what 5,000. It could happen to any of us if one person decides to like go after your channel. Mm-hmm. Like, this is it's honestly, I I just can't believe there's no more people that going after it. Like, you know, I just I don't like the Hales. I do nothing with the Hales. I know nothing about the Hales. I don't, don't give a shit about the Hales. They're a I, bunch of cocksuckers, is what they are. Yeah, I've heard that. Instead That's why of what the Hales should be called, the wah, 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 wah channel. No, I know. Um, but yeah, uh, people say watch Melanie Little. Mel- do you know Melanie Little? She's really good, Melanie Little, um, as well. I know who She's Melanie Little is. I, I, like I said, I really do need to watch some stuff on Karen Reed. I just honestly, I just everybody's like, oh, look, there's all kinds of them. Like, I hear, and I'm not gonna lie, I hear this all the time, and then I'm like, I watch it, and then there's nothing there. And like I said, the whole Turtle Boy thing kind of gave me an excuse just to zone out, but I'll, I so, need, I need she- to give her a fair look. You need to go. Just go. Just go to Melanie Little. Don't go to anyone else. Go to Melanie Little. I'll take a look. She breaks everything down. I, I've there's seen no her stuff She's pretty good. Yeah, there's no Turtle Boy Association whatsoever towards it. It's she just gives her analysis. Uh, I think she's very, very good. So um, yeah, we got people in here. Um, you have this. There, there's lots of different channels for David at the minute. We shared them yes. yesterday. Murph's got him here as well. Uh, go go there as well. Um, free MLS. Yeah, he's a. You seem very popular, David. So uh, good luck to you with the channel. I am. I do feel sorry that's happened to you. Wouldn't want it to happen to anybody. Um, Parallax, why is this guy going to lose his channel? Because he was critical of what the what the hails people, and they started copy striking him. And then he pointed out like so he got a copy of the phone call. That him and the sheriff's office had, 
and he had an independent copy of it and he copy struck that and that was the third copy strike in 90 days so that's why because what the fails can't handle criticism or that people might find out they're fucking assholes yeah and if you're a content creator i hope it doesn't happen to you because it's fucking scary man um mm -hmm. and i'm i'm more angry the fact that like no one's even pushing this like because this could happen to any of us um so but anyway that's up to them that's up to them their conscience but um yeah happy to always share this shit um when you say what did i miss the verdict apple river yeah it was a first degree uh reckless murder so not the intentional it was the reckless first degree uh wendy what the fails thank you for sharing good thing i retired yes um what the fails yeah it's free speech matters absolutely no one's letting david retire for real oops <laughs> Was if they would chance to, yes. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So yeah, have a look at it if you want to come on one day with Sean as, as well. Be free to, if not, it's absolutely fine. Um, I know you've got to go with it in a second, but um, I, I do appreciate you jumping on. I mean, as I say, I didn't expect you a to be on, and b, I didn't expect the verdict quite this this soon, really. Um, I the, the only one comment that other people have made on this chat that I want to just touch base with you before you do leave was the defense themselves. Um, a lot of people were surprised when they rested um thought that they might bring on an expert about shock or something similar to that. Uh, is that something you would have looked at them to do or was it a case of no, they did what they could, do you think? Um... Oh, hold on one second. Sorry. That's all right. That's funny, Stabby. That is funny. Sorry, my, my scheduler was making sure I was, and producer was making sure I was getting ready to go. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I completely, I, I, I was talking, I completely lost track of what, what we were, what you were asking. Could you say it again? Very quickly for you, just yeah. do you are we to probably when the defense rested when they did, or they didn't bring any kind of expert witnesses about shock or anything like that? Oh no, I man, that, that's not really going to get you anywhere because you can then turn around and use that to explain why all the kids' stories didn't match up. So that's and I am yeah, that's right. I am so pro cop stabby. <laughs> I, I don't think it would have. I don't think it would have mattered. I don't think. I don't think an expert like that would have mattered. Um. Because it's, I, like I said, I think it could have easily gone the other way for that too. Um, I just, it's, oh geez, I thought that was a storm with the garbage truck. Uh, it, I, I just don't you know what the see. expert, I just don't know what the expert had to do. Like, yeah, there's shock involved, but then you could say, well, the way that applied to the people getting stabbed. Yeah. So. No, it's fine. Look, you need to go. So you go, man. Yeah, I no, no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying in general, though. That's kind of how I look at it. Like, I'm not sure where you would get enough out of that person to help you. Yeah. Um, oh, Coffee fine. Offer is finally calling bullshit in Richard Allen. That's nice, but for a change. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Look, yeah, I appreciate you jumping on uh, on mm -hmm. short notice. Um, I want to have you back on another time. Um, obviously, I, sh I think we share a similar audience. So, um, yeah, it'd be great. And, yeah, you go, man. You go off to court, and uh, we'll catch up soon. All right, Sean? All right. Thanks, Dylan. Everybody take care. And, uh, guys, yeah, please like and subscribe. And uh, um, well, what's – why are we – why thanks david because i'm from i'm from ohio but i like michigan but remember i don't like michigan state like you do i like michigan michigan so i'm not too you can't hate on me too much so. but anyways thanks sure. for having me on dylan i'll see you around take care buddy take care um, everybody so th thanks to sean for being there you all know him anyway so uh no need to introduce him anymore um Obviously disappointing for most of you with the verdict. They went for the lesser count. 
But it is what it is. Those are the twists and turns we go by. Um, I will be doing the can read here in tomorrow now, uh, officially, and obviously next week doing the trial. Um, we're going to end the stream there. I'm fucking starving. Hank Marvin. Um, it's half six in the evening here. I've not eaten since lunch. So uh, I do appreciate everyone for sticking around. I'm not going to carry on with Tregos, but, um, you know, again, go subscribe to uh, God of Law um, on his Lego stream. And, um, yeah, hope you get back on your, on your feet soon, David, with that, I'm sure you will. Um, thank you to FM as well. Please make sure you have liked this stream. Subscribe uh, if you're already subscribed. Thank you, FM, and thank you for pointing Sean towards us. So, um, again, thank you, everyone, for being here. Appreciate you. Dennis, a good looking court tomorrow, Dan, and um, we'll see you soon, buddy. Again, free MLS. Laters by David. Yeah. Again, thank you for everybody that has been here. Um, Throughout this trial, I've really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot different from Kariga trial, which pissed me off. Um, that one really pissed me off. Four and a half months of our lives will never get back. This was nice and short, um, a week and a half. Obviously, people are divided with it, but it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Um, so Brody said something. What's Brody said? Um, the video was really bad for them when they showed it. It's Trinton. Updating Kitsap. So this is the Krieger trial. Huge brawl at a local bar. Hunter, Krieger's mum and her boyfriend got into a fight um, with Bobby Watson's friend. Hunter's mum walked away with a black eye. Yeah, I heard that the other day. It's very unfortunate. Um, Paddington, pardon, pardon, pardon. <laughs> Disappointed for it, but at least he didn't get the worst shot. Yes, it was because of lesser. I still don't get, understand there. I don't agree with it, but it is what it is. No worries. I got to run as well. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, participant meetings. Thank you to Sean as well. Really enjoyed having him on. We'll get him back on as well. Um, see some of you for the hearing tomorrow. And if not, see you soon. Catch you all later. Thank you again for all your time and all your support this week. Um, yeah. And with that, I'll do the outro. Take care, people. And as always, free Zachary Anderson.